Uh, Walker, what does it mean? Well, Georgia's been very stereotyped. When it's fashionable to pass, Georgia has stayed with a run about 80% of the time. And the compelling reason for that is the ability of Herschel Walker. But I would look for the day that Georgia to make some minor changes at least and you be more flexible in the use of Herschel. Put him in motion, Keith. Use him as a wing back. Get the ball to him on some short passes rather than just pitching a handoff from the I formation tailback. And Blackledge, of course, is his offensive package is, is an intermediate range. He is not a nickel and dime thrower. Well, the striking thing is the explosiveness. Penn State can run or pass equally well. Blackledge threw 22 touchdown passes, passed for over 2,200 yards. And this is going to present major problems to the Georgia defense. One of the things that's happened in the last few hours, it seems to be a loss for the Georgia Bulldogs. Their backup tailback, Carney Norris, missed curfew. Gone. Not dressed. Out of the ball game. Freshman Tron Jackson steps in as the backup. That weakens that important tailback position and the kick return position. Well, uh, that will put more emphasis on Herschel having to stay in the ball game. But when this is a team sport, and regrettable as it is, you have coaches have to make those decisions. Already called the team captains we'll now on the field field. with the you referee, Vance Carlson. You may kick or receive or defend either goal. Penn State You'll has receive. won the toss. It is a big eight officiating crew. Penn State will receive. Want to kick from this side. All right, so the Nittany Lions will have the first offensive series. And uh, the man who's going to pull the trigger for them is the man who's going to introduce the offensive starters for the Nittany Lions. Hi, I'm Todd Blackledge, quarterback of the Penn State Nittany Lions. And I'd like to introduce you to the rest of the starting lineup for the Sugar Bowl. Starting with my roommate, number 25, running back Kurt Warner from tiny Wyoming, West Virginia. We all call him Curtis Blow. Next, we have John Williams, fullback, number 44, from Somerville, New Jersey, and his friends call him Doo Doo. Kevin Bow, number 11, wide receiver and return specialist from Long Island, New York, recently won the ET Lookalike contest at Penn State. Thanks, Warner B. <laughs> Greg Garrity, number 19, from Bradford Wood, Pennsylvania, is a fine receiver, losing a lot of his hair, though. Mike McCluskey, big tight end from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, father, judge, high school, tremendous pass receiver. Hope you get a few blocks in the sugar ball. Thanks, buddy. You're welcome. Bill Kantz, real name Julius, nickname Juju, one of the twin towers at offensive tackle from Bell Vernon, Pennsylvania, tremendous football player. Big Dick McGinnis from State College, Pennsylvania, an offensive guard. Very, very, very seldom do you see him without a big pinch of skull in his mouth, but he looks good today. Look good, Dick. Mark Battaglia, Batman, many other nicknames that I can't mention on national TV, <laughs> but Batman is from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, a tremendous offensive center, and he loves seafood. <laughs> Pete Spiros, offensive guard from Maryland, Potomac, Maryland, number 56, one of our team captains, and he's been a three-year starter and spends a lot of time in the weight room. Doesn't have much of a neck. Ronnie Heller, big offensive tackle, converted from tight end this year uh, from Farmingdale, New York, and he's really filled in and done a great job at offensive tackle for us. And that's the starting lineup that you'll see in the Sugar Bowl, and that's the offensive lineup that's going to do a number on the Georgia Bulldogs. He hopes, he <laughs> says, he hopes. And of course, as we noted at the very beginning, this is one of those games where it's just let them play because these are two quality teams from two great universities coached by two outstanding groups of coaches. The Georgia Bulldogs will kick off Kevin Butler, the sophomore from Stone Mountain. He can knock it deep. And back to return, Kevin Bow, number 11, and Tony Mumford, number 12, and the 49th Sugar Bowl game is underway, and Butler knocks it all the way to the back of the end zone. No return on it. The Georgia Bulldogs, 11-0, ranked one in the AP and UPI polls. Their record on the season, you see, they started a little slow. That trouble with Clemson, a good team. Had the scuffle against BYU, had some squeezes along the way, closed out with a strong showing against Georgia Tech. Penn State, ranked number two, stumbled just one time. That was against Alabama. They've lost, uh, had trouble. In fact, Joe has never beaten the Bear. And they were trounced 42-21, but uh, righted themselves and finished very strong. Well, the general feeling is that the winner of this game should claim the national championship, if for no other reason, because of the ballot power in their respective sections of the country. 
And as we come to the attack on the first offensive play, it is Kurt Warner, number 25, carrying the ball. Georgia's defense lines up with Dale Carver, Freddie Gilbert, Kevin Jackson, Tim Crow, Stan Dooley. Backers are Tommy Thurston and Will Fort. The secondary, Ronnie Harris, Tony Flack, Terry Hogue, and Jeff Sanchez. And Frank Royals, I think this is what Vince Dooley was worried about, that Penn State would come out here on the first offensive series and just try to jam the ball right down their throat. And if they can do it, look out. But Penn State's offensive line is much superior physically than Georgia's defense, and that could be the plan. But on second down, they go to the pass. And it's Warner getting the ball at the 30, where he is uh, brought down right at the 30. And that looks like enough for a first down, as he was able to twist himself forward and move the ball beyond the market. So it is going to be a first down for Penn State. So they run on the first play, throw it on the second, and they get 10 yards. We can look at these graphics. It shows Penn State's balance. 2,100, 215 yards passing, 207 yards rushing. The first time in over 40 years that Penn State has passed during the season for more yardage than they ran. But this shows the equal balance in their offense. Joel Coles is now in there at fullback for Penn State. John Williams moves into the tailback position and uh, Johnny Williams who has played both the fullback and the tailback position is a very good he may wind up in his senior year being only a junior when Kurt Warner leaves he may wind up being the tailback next year but John Williams has already rushed for 600 yards from the fullback position and he's caught 21 passes and that shows the versatility of the Penn State offense having a fullback that effective second down and nine from the 31 for the Lions Wearing what is uh, fondly referred to as their generic white uniform. They are not fancy. Here's the down the middle for the tight end, McCluskey. And it's a big one all the way down to the Georgia 37 yard line. Big Mike McCluskey, 6'5, 240 from Philadelphia. Watch Blackledge fake to the tailback. This holds the linebacker. Now McCloskey is going right down the middle. Georgia was out of free safety. While they're the defense without a free safety, they put one of their defensive men up on the playing the short defender, leaving the hole down the middle for the completion, 34 yards. McCloskey has caught on the regular season 18 passes for better than 12 and a half yards per catch. He is a big play man for a tight end. First down, Lions, Georgia, 37. And back goes Blackledge. No pressure on top. Over the middle. Good to Garrity. First down. Penn State inside the Georgia 10. Penn State's offensive line are doing a great job. Georgia's rushing only four people. That's what they like to do. And you see Blackledge have the poise. Throws the ball right over the middle. Watch it. One thing that Joe Paterno says about Blackledge, he has cut down his stride, a quicker delivery than any time, and Garrity catches his 33rd pass of the season for 27 yards. And it's first down and goal to go for Penn State. The ball just inside the Georgia 10. Bulldogs now are going to have to get some more people up on the front. They do. They go into a seven-man front right now with the linebackers plugging a hole. Blackledge back, whips it to the corner, pass caught by McCluskey, knocked out of bounds inside the five. So the tight end continues to play an important role for the Lions offense as he steps out at the three. McCloskey is six foot five, weighs 245 pounds, and he's studying the film. He, he looked to me like in charging off the line, he could keep up with the wide receivers, which means he has a 4'6 to 4'7 speed. Blackledge now four out of four in his passing for 74 yards. Kenny Jackson and Greg Garrity lead the ball game. Kurt Warner and Johnny Williams come back into the ball game. Coles stays in for blocking. So they're going to go into a power eye. Two full backs and the ball is to Warner. Kurt Warner going to the outside. It's a foot race to the flat. Touchdown, Penn State. see a great block by Coles number 20. Also pulling out uh, his law of the guard. They pile up uh, Hogue, the safety man, who was blitzing on the play, and Sanchez, the free safety, couldn't outrun and get to the corner before Warner scores with the ball. How easy Penn State made it look on that drive. 80 yards. The point. 
Uh, Gonchitano is good. 5'7", 165 pounder from Coral Springs, Florida, and Penn State goes 80 yards in two minutes and 51 seconds to lead it, seven to nothing. So Kurt Warner carries the ball the first two plays of that drive by Penn State one of them uh, running one of them receiving the pass for a first down and then had the privilege of cantering it in to the corner from three yards out and Penn State's on the board seven to nothing and Massimo Manka now will kick it off the deep people are Tron Jackson number 25 for Georgia and Keith Montgomery number 23 Jimmy Harrell number 82 it'll be Harrell back on the goal line with Montgomery. One is a freshman, one is a sophomore. And Jimmy Harrell, the sophomore from Somerville, South Carolina, took a step forward and decided he'd better wait it out. So Georgia will start at the 20 with Johnny Lastinger opening at the quarterback position. Herschel Walker will be the tailback. And uh, working at fullback will be Chris McCarthy, who's turned out to be a fine blocker, winning the job at midseason. Chuck Jones is the flanker. He's not as swift as you've seen in the past. Kevin Harris is another wide man to split in. Georgia is a little bit short of real raw speed at the wide receiver positions. But let's see what the Bulldogs decide to do in their first defensive possession. As Penn State leads by a score of seven to nothing. And it is Lestinger at the line of scrimmage, cut down by Greg Gattuso, a big junior out of Pittsburgh. The offensive front for the Georgia Bulldogs. Norris Brown is the tight end, 6'3", 215. Jimmy Harper, a tackle, 270 pounds. Mike Weaver, a guard, a sophomore, 275. Wayne Radloff, the center, at 265. James Brown, uh, he's at 245 at guard, and Guy McIntyre weighs in at 250. Second down and 10 for the Bulldogs from their 20. Lasting a turns and gives it to the up man, McCarthy. The fullback, he crosses the 30. And that will be a first down for Georgia. So they send the short man on a nice trap hole over the left side, and he gets the first down. Sefter, Gattuso, Ofer, Ashley. The four men up front. The linebacker, to Kelly, right a sick Paffenroth for Penn State. The secondary, Biondi, one of the smaller men on the field, but a good one. Roger Jackson, Mark Robinson, and Harry Hamilton is the free safety. Plays a linebacker about half the time. First down, Bulldogs, their own 30. McCarthy, the fullback in motion. Herschel Walker's first carry goes to the outside. He gets it up to the 35. And there were one, two, three, four, five white shirts over there. Biondi was the man that shoved him out of bounds. One thing that Penn State would try to do to Herschel Walker's sweep plays, run him to the boundary. They feel like he's less effective going to the boundary, running east and west, rather than when he finds a crease, turns up inside, and makes big yardage. As we look at Herschel's marks for this year 1752 yards 5.2 average per rush 16 touchdowns if he stays healthy and if he stays at Georgia for his uh, senior season there's no reason why he won't break all known records as a running back got it again coming to the left side gets around the corner and then he has cut down coming up out of the secondary it's Mark Robinson number 32 the junior free safety from Silver Springs Maryland and he took him down with authority most people most people would say, what is a free safety making the tackle on the line of scrimmage? He's programmed to do this. Robinson number 32 is coming all the way from the free safety position. You can watch what a fine tackler he is. Tackling Herschel low. Jo Joe Paterno says that Mark Robinson is the next to the best tackle he's ever had at Penn State. Third down and three for the Georgia Bulldogs from their 37. Outside it goes to Walker. He's got the first down. He's looking for more. He's out to the 44 before they cut the feet from under him. And making the tackle, Walker Lee Ashley, number 37. They mark it down at the 44, and it's another first down for Georgia. Frank, I think he's running so much easier now with so much more confidence. He seems to sense where the opportunities are for him. That's a good point, Keith. His coaches say that he has gained the confidence to where he can wait and time his blocks of the offensive lineman to make the most yardage. Here's Herschel's NCAA records at the end of his junior year. Westinger, quick stand up. Little passes thrown and dropped, and it's incomplete. It was very close to being a lateral. Herman Archie, a freshman out of Columbus, was not overly aggressive in going for the ball. That was within a foot of being a lateral, looked to me like. One of those uh, confidence passes that let uh, Lastinger throw and complete the first pass to the ball game. 
The ball is coming forward just barely. Arch is just a freshman, and he made that freshman-like mistake, taking his eyes off of it, trying to run before he catches it. There's Joe Paterno. What a fabulous, distinguished, illustrious career he has had, and so has Vince Dooley at Georgia. Second down and ten. Go back to McCarthy. Second effort to about the 47, maybe the 48. Clarence Kay now is in the lineup. He's number 84, six foot three, 225 pound tight end. A fierce blocker and a pretty good pass receiver. He leads, the, Clarence Kay leads the Georgia receivers with 12 receptions, which gives you an indication of just how ineffective or how Georgia has at least pressed the running game and pretty much ignored the passing game. Nine minutes and 45 seconds to go in the first quarter of play. Georgia with a conversion on third down of a little better than 46% over the past season. It is third down. They need seven. Lasting is straight back. He has all day. He throws it over the middle, and it is complete. And the gain is good for the first down. It moves down to the Penn State 37, and it's Clarence Kay, the big tight end, oh. who was all alone to make the catch. What a great call it was. Another short pass. The confidence builder taking to Herschel and letting Kay, the tight end, delay, taking a block, and then just toss the ball right over the line of scrimmage because the linebackers had dropped deep. Radisek had dropped 15 yards deep, and Kay caught it for the first down. Bulldogs operating from the Penn State 37. Lastinger turns it upfield himself. He is hit by Radisek as he turns it upfield and gets in across the 34, just barely. Those two linebackers that Ken Kelly 98, Radisek 97, and Papenroth 33. Of the three of them, uh, Radisek and Kelly are the rangier and the quicker. Penn State is quite known for their great linebackers, and these fit in the into the category. Look at the tackles. Radisek, Radisek leading with 71. Patton Roth and Kelly third and four. And uh, eight pass interceptions amongst them. Ball is pitched out to Herschel Walker. Away from one, away from two, away from three to the sidelines and out of bounds. First down, Georgia Bulldog. Patton Roth finally slid him out of bounds. Well, that's a familiar run that we've seen many times from Herschel Walker. The Georgia fans are accustomed to this. A great block by McCarthy, number 46. He's got to make the key block. Gray is pulling around. Watch McCarthy block the, at the feet of the number 17, Hamilton. And then free safety, Robinson missed the tackle beyond the nearly, well, he did miss it. And finally, Paffenroth bringing him down. And it's first down, Georgia. The ball is at the Penn State, 21. And in motion now is lasting a turn. Penalty flag is thrown. The play goes up the middle with McCarthy carrying. And let's check the flag came from a linesman. Well, Georgia seems to be moving back, uh, Keith. One thing that Georgia doesn't need are penalties because the Georgia offense pressing the running game. If it's first and 10, they average three and a half yards per play. Big eight crew, referee Vance Carlson, Bob Claceris umpire, Dale Schroer is the lineman, Kent Hauk line judge, John Schroeder back judge, Artie Park the back judge, John Schroeder the field judge. This is Vance Carlson's last game, 25 years of it. Big eight retires you at age 57. He's been a good one. He's worked, I think he said, 244 major college games, 20 bowl and games. Outside, offense, first down. Keith, I want to echo those remarks about Vance Carlson. He's called some games for Arkansas through the years. We respected him, admired him, and he's had a very, very outstanding career. We'll miss him in coaching in the football. Ball is at the 26-yard line. First and 15 for Georgia. Lastinger gives it to Walker. Up the middle he goes, picking his way, slipping and sliding. One man, one man, Harry Hamilton, the strong safety, kept him from scoring. He picked his way through there and almost got away. And there's a penalty flag thrown across the way. Okay. You get Penn State. I'm sure that Georgia will refuse a penalty, but I, I, we've got to comment about the, the call of, of Les Stinger at quarterback, who has been somewhat maligned, even though he's 25 and 0 as a starting quarterback at Valdosta High School and at the University of Georgia. Let's hear the call, and we'll continue that. Well, offside, defense, decline. Second down. But on the last play, Lastinger changed the cadence of his snap count. He went to a higher number, and it drew Penn State offside and uh, opened up, I guess, a little bit of a hole. But there's Lastinger, 62 completions, only 41%, 907 yards. But there's some things that we'll talk about about this young man that he can do and do extremely well. It is second down and four from the 15 of Penn State. 
to the fullback. Lastinger keeps it, turns it, turns it upfield, and he's very close to the 10, very close to a first down. Ken Kelly, number 98, the linebacker, brought him down. As we look at Joe, a little bit worried. It was, I think this possession by Georgia was critically important for the Bulldogs' morale. After what happened to, to the defense on the first down, they felt like, hey, we might be in a score duel. As we look at Joe Paterno, he's a little bit worried. Thought his defense might be able to stop him, get the ball right back. That's what he's trying to do. First down. Boy, that's a good run by Les Thing on short yardage. It's also outside the 10, close to the 11, so uh, Georgia is going to have a little room to operate getting the first down. Keith, that's a great point. Coaches, you can't believe how important that is in our signal call and to think that we can get the first down uh, and have maybe eight downs from the one yard line, from the 11 yard line, rather than four from the 10. It's a big point. Harris wide to the left. McCarthy goes in motion. All goes to Walker. Walker dives, losing his footing, gets a yard, maybe two. Keith, we, excuse me, I, I was just going to say one of the trivia questions uh, our producer Chuck I was telling before the, the game is who blocked for Herschel Walker? Well, here's the man. He has the key block. He's got to block the force man coming right here, Hamilton. Watch him roll him up, number 17. What a great block. That's the, what we call the shoulder roll. He gets that shoulder on the legs, and they roll him up like a window shake. Got to like it, though. <laughs> and he does. Second down and eight. The ball is at the nine. Lastinger on a roll. Whipped it over the middle. No! Intended for Clarence K. And K was so alone, he was lonesome. But it was a great call. Yes, it was. Triple, it was a flood over to the right. The tight end blocked momentarily. Watch K come off and go inside. And the defensive safety man is supporting so fast. Robinson, number 32, took two steps up. Look how wide open he is. That's too bad. He led him just a little bit too much. Tried to be careful. Clay couldn't get to it. That's too bad. Third down and long. I'm not too sure I wouldn't come right back with that. <laughs> that wide open is repeating plays is sometimes the best thing you can do. Third down, the ball is near the nine. Harris in motion. Lastinger rolling it along, keeping it, turns it over. Boy, he took a whack from Radisek. Scott Radisek, that middle linebacker, was trailing the play. And he came down on him like a fallen wall, and it's fourth down. That gets Kevin Butler, the place kicker in the game. Radisek, number 70, 97, right in the middle of your screen. Watch him plug the hole. He reads it perfectly, keeps his shoulders parallel to the line of scrimmage, where the quarterback cannot cut in behind him. Once the quarterback makes it cut, his cut, he forces the play and makes the stop. So the overthrow of the pass by Lastinger when he had a wide open K cost him the touchdown opportunity. And now here's your field goal try by Kevin Butler. The ball is put down back at the 17. Plenty of leg, and it's good. So Butler, who has had a great career in his two years at Georgia, continues to produce points, and it's now a 7-3 ball game. So both teams get on the scoreboard in their first defensive possessions here. Penn State getting the touchdown. Georgia had the opportunity and missed with it and settled for the 27-yard field goal. Kevin Butler now will kick it off. He has kicked it off, including this game tonight. 64 times, 51 have not been returned. Kevin Bow, number 11. Tony Mumford, number 12, the deep people for Penn State. And Butler hits it. And it's deep again. We're back there and gone. It'll be Penn State's ball, first down, at its 20. Keith, I, thought, I think it's worth mentioning that Penn State scored on an 80-yard drive in three minutes. It took Georgia six minutes to go approximately, um, think what, uh, 71 yards. Yeah. Well, Shows that's the nature of the Penn State ball club. They can burn you from anywhere. Their wide receivers have caught 70 three passes and Georgia's wide receivers have caught 18 passes shows you the explosive talent that Penn State has triple formation Chief. Jackson and Garrity the wide people Warner's in the slot and Blackledge back to put it up he loops out oh. up the screen pass Warner's got the ball and Warner's got a big gain up across the 35 Picked up about 15 yards on the screen. Tony Flack, who is the first freshman in Vince Dooley's coaching history to start for him at a cornerback position. So Kurt Warner from Wyoming, West Virginia, who holds some 40-odd Penn State rushing records, turns in a big game. 
He's, he's going to have a fine career as a professional, I would think. He has worked hard to make himself a better football player, both in running, blocking, pass receiving. He's an all-purpose back now. Lions first down, their own 36, leading by a score of 7 to 3. Five and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. Warner turns it back inside. They seemingly had him trapped behind the line of scrimmage, but the agility of the man, he turns it back inside and gets a short gain out of it. Coming up on ABC's NFL Monday Night Football, Dallas, Minnesota. Live 9 Eastern Time, January 3rd, two playoff teams banging heads now. The game's scheduled for uh, Minnesota, but I'm sure most of you have heard that they tore a hole in the roof cleaning the snow off. And I frankly can't tell you at this moment if they are sure the game's going to be played there. They're trying to get it fixed, get a new panel for it. Here's the pass to the sideline by Blackledge intended uh, by, for uh, Kenny Jackson, and Jackson can't get to it. Keep uh, the pass. The game was intended if uh, they couldn't get it fixed to bring it down here to the Superdome, but now I'm told that they will have it fixed and we'll be able to play the game in Minnesota. Keith, on second and long, Penn State has passed 70 percent of the time, and Georgia came with the first blitz of the ball game and forced Blackledge to throw before the deep pattern that Penn State stresses was could develop. So he's looking at third down and about eight now from his own 37, just outside there. He sends Kenny Jackson in motion. And he's going to put it up. And there's no pressure on him. Now there's some heat. And they got it. That was a terrific second effort by Tim Crow, 91, a senior from Stone Mountain. Crow was blocked, but he wouldn't quit. Blackledge looked left. Looked right, and by that time, Crow had freed himself, and he got it. Number 91, Tim Crow. This is his fifth sack. He's rushing over Laub, the offensive left guard. But this is what we call a coverage sack. The coverage of the backs brought about the possibility of the sack, and Crow did make a tremendous effort to get there. Ralph Giacomaro is in the punt for Penn State. Averaging just under 42 yards per kick, and it's a beauty. A high hanger for Jimmy Harrow back at his 22 up to his 26 55 yard punt for Giacomaro four minutes and six seconds to play in the first quarter and the Penn State Nittany Lions lead the Georgia Bulldogs seven to three we are with 406 remaining in the first quarter 27 yard line of Georgia Bulldogs have the ball Walker the tailback last thing the quarterback MacArthur the fullback Norris Brown the tight end Kevin Harris the wide man Penn State shows a five man front ball goes to the fullback McCarthy three yards to the 30 and among the most interested people I would think in this country would be the SMU Mustangs who won their game today against Pittsburgh seven to three. Let's watch linebacker Radisek, number 97. Linebackers are taught to read and react and then plug. That's a perfect illustration of what he's been taught and worked on all week long. And from the 30, second down and seven. McCarthy goes the other way, puts him out in front of Walker. Herschel cuts it back. Herschel gets nailed by four white shirts at the 32. Harry Hamilton, the strong safety, Frank, looks like that he has been assigned to Herschel. Keith, that is, that's what he's programmed for. There's a penalty for roughness now, right now, that was dropped immediately. Officials have stopped the clock. On oh, both teams. There was a little scuffle going on around Walker. It was, I don't believe it was Walker. Foul. Personal foul on the offense and the defense. The down counts. Third down. Let's watch the, Let's watch and see if we can't pick it up. Ashley, number 37, and Weaver, number 63. I believe both of them lose their tempers. This is a team sport. You play by the rules. You don't get excited. Let the other fella get excited and get the penalty. Well, Weaver seems to retaliate a little bit on Walker, number 37. And it's third down and four for Georgia. Lasting it back. Gets his pass away, pass is incomplete. He was thrown absolutely right on the hands of Herman Archie. And it's the second time in the ball game that Herman Archie has had the ball in his hands and has tried to run before the ball got there. Keith, that's too bad because that would have been a critical first down given Georgia uh, possession of the football for, for a while longer. He's wide open, 39 beyond, beyond the, well, 
was in behind him, and Archer could have made uh, more than just a completion to the run after the catch. Jim Broadway comes in to do the punting, averaging right at 40 yards on his career, a little better than 40 on the season. Got a hurry. Lions put some heat on him, gets a pretty good kick out of there. Fair catch is called by Bow. Back at the 29-yard line of Penn State. 38-yard punt, good hanger. Keith, it, there was a chance of uh, roughing the kicker, but the official did not call it. And so, 2-5-7 to go, first quarter, 7-3, Penn State. The right leg, the kick is away now. Watch the leg come down. He has protection as long as the kick is in the air. Excuse me, as long as his foot is in the air. I think it's illegal to, to touch him while it, until his foot returns to the ground. No flag. First down. Penn State 29. Lions lead 7-3. Blackledge gives to Warner. Kirk straight ahead. Gets about three up to near the 32. So it'll be second down in about seven in the Cotton Bowl today. The SMU Mustangs remained undefeated. On the season, beating Pittsburgh 7-3. Big day for Eric Dickerson. Big day for Dan Marino. In the Fiesta Bowl, Arizona State beating Oklahoma 32-21. And look at, look at Dupree. Dupree goes for 239 yards, and he, he hurt his hamstring. He didn't play. 14-yard average. Oh, Blackledge, Bambo, goes loose. And it's recovered by Penn State back at the 17. Jimmy Payne, number 87. <laughs> Jimmy Payne has been a holy terror rushing the passer. He has the greatest knack of defeating the offensive blocker and penetrating. Watch him explode, close the gap. Penn State is very lucky that one of their players, I guess that's Williams, comes over and falls on it. What a play by Jimmy Payne, who has been injured for the last five weeks. They don't figure, didn't figure he'd play a whole lot in this ball game. But his first moment or two is certainly obvious, isn't it? And I think Payne might have jumped offside that time. Or we could have had movement along the front for Penn State. Their penalty flags down. The loss was all the way back to the 17 from the 32 on the sack by Payne and the fumble by Blackledge. And here's the call. Offside against Georgia. Keith, one thing that's uh, critically important when you rush the passer. Uh, Jimmy Payne watches the ball and he tries to get the jump as the ball first moves and uh, he just was a little anxious but it's a uh, in, in all of my time I don't think I've seen anybody that's more effective at putting pressure on the passer without the blitz just individual ability than that young man Jimmy Payne number 87 all Southeastern Conference pick is a sophomore and junior and is a senior. offside defense third down and the ball is sitting at the 22. They've got to go to near the 40. Tom Ramsey had a big day for the UCLA Bruins as they beat Michigan 24 to 14 to win the Rose Bowl today. So it was a great season for Terry Donahue and his UCLA Bruins. Third down. And Blackledge on a deep drop. Goes deep with it. And it is incomplete. Oh, that was a heck of an effort. Upfield by Greg Garrity got his hands on it, but he couldn't bring it down. And so it'll be fourth down, and Penn State will punt. Jeff Sanchez, the safety man, the emphasis on pass defense is breaking on the ball, changing direction. Watch how far Sanchez, number 21, he's to the left, he's been watched, he comes all the way over, number 21, and he puts his hands and shoulders and strips the ball free. Just a tremendous play. Young man intercepted nine passes, second in the nation behind Terry Hogue, Georgia's strong safety, who intercepted 12 this season. Jocker Morrow to punt. First punt in the ball game tonight was a 55-yarder. Jimmy Harrell brought it back five yards. Let's see what happens here. He's got it high. It's hanging. Harrell's going to try to come with it. One man, he loses the ball. And Georgia will keep it. Well, Jimmy had a pretty good move to find a little crease and some running room. The only thing was he forgot his luggage. Roger <laughs> Alexander. And that luggage is important. Uh, it, I know that Vince Dooley is, uh, his stomach jumped right up in his throat. He's trying to sidestep, and uh, someone there just stripped the ball. Alexander yep. stripped the ball. 
and Georgia alertly falls on it. I believe it's young Terry Hogue who's always around and uh, makes the big play for Georgia and has all season long consensus All-America. Terry Hogue in the uh, in his freshman year against Notre Dame, the year Georgia won his first national championship, blocked the field goal that helped ignite the drive for the touchdown. That won the game. That's Herschel Walker carrying the ball. And he just slips and slides and glides through there for about five, five and a half yards before Harry Hamilton again makes the stop to strong safety. Georgia uses a different blocking scheme than any football team in the, that I have seen in my time. They block every man on the line of scrimmage. No one releases, even though Herschel may be running to the right. The left side stays in so that Herschel can come back if he wants to. Second down and five. Walker again. Caught behind the line of scrimmage by Walker Lee Ashley. Walker Lee Ashley played linebacker last year, started out this year at the defensive left-end position, but he plays better at the right-end position. He's the power in, and he makes a great play. Once, watch him change direction. As soon as he sees Walker cutting inside, he leaves his feet, grabs the, the ankles of uh, Walker, and brings him down. And the first quarter is over in this 49th Super Bowl game at the Superdome in New Orleans, Louisiana. And after 15 minutes of play, the ball has gone up and down the field. And the Nittany Lions of Penn State. New Orleans with Penn State leading Georgia 7-3. The Georgia Bulldogs have the football at their own 42. Third down and four. Melvin Simmons, number 28. Wide man to the top of the picture. Herschel Walker, the tailback. He's got it. The sidelines, and he's got a whole lot of folks wearing white, including Harry Hamilton, 17, and Joe Hines, 52. And so Georgia will have to punt it. Well, the numbers of the first quarter pr prove that uh, the offenses can move the ball, but the amazing thing, Kent State is minus 22 because of the sacks rushing. They have 90 passing. Georgia on the hand, just on the hand, just reverse. Rushing leads the, the uh, passing. About what we expected. Jim Broadway in the punt. First kick tonight, 38 yards. Kevin Bow, deep man for Penn State. This time Broadway gets it out of there without a whole lot of pressure. Not a very good kick. A low line drive, and Bow slips and spins and comes back with that 35 yard punt, about eight yards. And Penn State will start first down from their own 32. Keith, one thing that we coaches sometimes fear is scoring too easily on your first drive. You get the idea, your team, that is, gets the idea, well, hey, we're going to score a lot of points. It's going to be easy. And uh, sometimes you kind of go into to a state of shock when you don't score the second, third time. That's what's happened to Penn State. Georgia made some adjustments, and they've shut Penn State down on the next two possessions. So I'm trying to look in here and see whether or not Jimmy Payne is out there on the field. Georgia steps in there. Tommy Thurston steps in and calls timeout. And Payne was not out there. Ge Georgia only had ten players. Ten on players. Yep. Yeah. Well, maybe that's why Payne should have been out there. 14-15 <laughs> to go in the first half. Georgia will take the timeout. We are USA. 14-15 to go in the first half. Penn State leading Georgia 7-3. Jimmy Payne was not the missing party. He's still not out there, but now Georgia has 11 people on the field to play Penn State. And the Lions will come up first down from their own 32. That's Kenny Jackson in motion coming into the picture. Blackledge back to throw. No pressure. Down he goes. Great catch by Jackson at the Georgia 45. Whoa, what a catch that was. The Penn State passing attack has time needs three to three and a half seconds because their receivers are running deeper than the linebackers dare drop because the linebackers have to support on the nickel and dime passes. Watch number 82 Jackson turn to find eye contact and uh, make the play. Gilbert number 90 is the next to Payne is the next best rusher the Georgia team has. He finally gets back there and tackles Blackledge, but not until the pass has been thrown and completed. And first down at the Georgia 45 for the Lions. Jackson again goes in motion. Todd Blackledge drops the throw. He's trying to set up a screen for Johnny Williams. He's got that screen working now, but the Bulldogs penetrate it. And there's a loss on the play of two. Coming through was Jeff Sanchez, number 31, to make the stop. Also, Kenneth Sims, number 57, a linebacker. Linebackers have got to play the screen. That's the thing that worries 
any coach who's trying to, to get pressure on the passer, and then when they call the screen, come on linebackers, get there. And he did. You can see where the drives began, the length and result of Penn State. Success on the first one, failure the second, third possession. Blackledge seven out of nine for 111 yards. Second down and 12. Ball goes to Kurt Warner. Gets around the corner. Cuts it back. Great run by Warner. First down Lions inside the Georgia 25 to the 21. Joe Paterno has said that Kurt Warner is as good as any back that he's ever coached. And you get a clear indication of why Joe feels that he has the move to go away from the defender. He has the speed. He's going to get a great block from Ron Heller, number 78. Heller's going to block the cornerback out. Watch him right there. Sets him up, and, and uh, Warner sets the block up and breaks back inside. And Georgia finally pulls him down, but not after a long game. First down for the Lions, Georgia 21. Blackledge looks right. Goes over the middle, post pattern, Garrett Eno, thrown too long. On first down plays, right here is a very revealing little piece of information. On first down plays in this ball game to this point, Penn State is averaging a little better than 11 yards per first down play. Georgia only three. Penn State is throwing a lot on first down, but let's, let's watch the Penn State offense, what Blackledge and Warner have done. This is a major key. Watch this. They passed for 241 yards. Warner only rushed for 52. That's the first five ball games. When the offensive line gained credibility and effectiveness, they switched over and began to run the football and pass less. Jimmy Payne is now in to put some heat on the passer if they can find a way to get him through there. Second down and 10. Ball given to Warner. Warner dancing around looking for daylight and didn't find any. Perry Hogue. Warner had juked him and gotten past Hogue on the previous play and made a big gain out of it. This time, Hogue nailed it. One thing that Georgia defense does very effectively is that's pursue up and down the line. That's the strength of their defense is the speed, the quickness when the teams run wide. That was a clear indication of why Georgia's had success with their defense over the years. They're fourth in the nation against scoring. Line 12. Ron Heller shaking up there. The 6'6", 248-pound junior from Farmingdale, New York, is going to leave the ball game. But he's walking off under his own. He's turned out to be quite an author. He's been keeping the daily diary for the <laughs> folks at home. He was a tight end and has moved to offensive tackle and had a fine senior year. It is third down and 10. The ball is on the Georgia 21. Jackson and Garrity are both wide left. Jackson going back toward the ball. Not going to turn come this way. They're both going the same direction. Look out. Looped out and it's incomplete. Kirk Bowman, the tight end, was actually the closest man to the ball as Tommy Thurston was coming hard and made Blackledge get rid of it. As I've said before, and Keith, and you, we've talked about it, the one thing that Penn State has had trouble with on, on few occasions is pass protection. Here's a perfect example. Their patterns are deep and long down the field. Required three or three and a half seconds. First of the linebacker fired, forced the throw, and a bad throw, and it goes incomplete. Nick Gonchitano now in for a 37-yard field goal try. He's kicked for 56 points. From this distance, he's three out of four this year. The kick is plenty long, and the kick is good. With 11 minutes and 47 seconds to play in the first half here at the Sugar Bowl, the Superdome in New Orleans, Louisiana. The Nittany Lions take a 10-3 lead over the Georgia Bulldogs. Timeout. Penn State will kick off now to the Georgia Bulldogs leading by seven points, 10 to three. There's the time remaining, 11.47 in the first half. Jimmy Harrell and Keith Montgomery are the deep people for Georgia. As Massimo Monka hits the ball and hangs it high for Harrell. A yard deep in the end zone, he's coming out. Whoa, fumbles the ball, goes out of bounds. My goodness, he took a whack. And the ball tumbles out of bounds up around the 17. Georgia keeps it. Rogers Alexander, number 95, is the man who's going to knock it loose. Watch this hit. That hit, the headgear went right on the football. And it, it, the force of the headgear, there was no way that Harold could hold on to the ball. Georgia's lucky that it went all the way out of bounds before Penn State could uh, recover it. Bulldogs will start at their own 17. Lions going 47 yards in seven plays. 
They get their field goal from 37 yards. Double wide top of the picture for Georgia. Walker up the middle he comes. And he's up to about the 20. Give him three. Ken Kelly, number 98, helps him to his feet. Georgia. The Professional Bowlers Tour, Saturday, January 15, returning for its 22nd consecutive season on ABC Sports, live at 5 Eastern Time. It will not be live on the West Coast. Chris Schenkel, the host, one of the most successful sports television programs in the history of this business. Here's Lestinger rolling left, throwing to the sideline, pass incomplete, pass intended for Chuck Jones, the flanker. It is at the flanker position that Georgia, I think, really has been hurt this year. They just simply couldn't find, Frank, the kind of speed that they had had previous years. I think that uh, Lestinger's uh, passing percentage is a true indication of that because the defensive backs will squat on your wide receivers and not worry about going deep and there's no room to throw the ball. Lasting is one out of five for 16 yards so far. If you look at Vince Dooley and his record, three consecutive Southeast Conference championships, 33 and two. Third down and about seven. That's McCarthy, the fullback. Lastinger rolls it that way. Walker throws a good block for him. Lastinger gets up the middle and tries to dive for the marker. He is at the 27. He is close. It's going to be, it depends upon the spot. Keith is going to, if he marks it to the yard line, it's going to be a first down. But uh, I believe he's just, well, it's going to be very close, as you said. A good, good decision by Lastinger. The receivers were covered. You all take a chance, trailing by seven points. You can always punt it away and let your defense get the ball back for you. Good. First down. Critical. Critical play by last week. Good judgment on his part. Georgia keeps possession of it at 10-24 to go in the first half. First down. They're on 27. Jones is out at the flanker spot. Number one in to replace him is Kevin Harris, number 20. They lined up in there now with both tight ends. Kay and Brown give the ball to Herschel Walker. And there's nothing there. I mean, nothing there. Walker Lee Ashley, Scott Radosek, and Harry Hamilton. Walker Lee Ashley is six feet, weighs 230 pounds, and on this particular play, watch him use his hands. Puts them on the headgear of Harper number 75. Doesn't lose sight of the ball care. Now he separates himself from the blocker, which is the mark of a great football player. And Walker Lee Ashley has been sensational for the last two years for the Penn State Nittany Lions. Herschel now 12 carries and 45 yards in the ball game. Penn State's pretty well controlled him so far. Lions lead 10-3. And Lastinger back to throw. That's time. Go short over the middle from Terrence K. Second reception by K. Just short of first down. Depending again on the mark. Greg Gattuso brought him down. They may have marked him far enough to give him a first down. Oh, Clarence K stretched yeah. that body out. Keith. Yeah, he really did. He got about an extra two feet, but that's thinking. That's the presence of mind. And Clarence K is really one of the most physical football players that Georgia has had in a long time. The coaches tell me he could be a starting guard for Nebraska, Southern Cal, or anybody, and he plays tight end for Georgia. Mark, that's a 38 now where it's first down Bulldogs. Double uh, wide to the right side, and they're going that way with it. Look out. Oh, look out. Beyondi had an idea, didn't he? The pass coming in the direction of Melvin Simmons and little Dan Beyondi. He's only 5'8", but weighs 170 pounds, and he is well strung together. He was really hunting that thing. Keith, he, he guessed exactly. He took a chance. He knew for somehow uh, exactly what the play was, and if he just played the ball, he would have intercepted it going in the other direction for the Nittany Lions. Great play by number 39. The smallest player on the squad, a walk-on, but it's Leonard. This is his fourth year. It's a tough little bit. Second down and ten. That's Walker. Taking his way. And again, Ashley. Walker Lee Ashley played the blocking very well. Slowed it up. And then Dave Ofer trailing the play. And they bring him down. Penn State's defense is the most unusual alignment that I have seen in my time in coaching. They only have two down linemen. Two, that's uh, Gattusco and Ofer. The rest of the people are standing up on most of the plays. 
in what we call a radar position where they can see and work up and down the line. Occasionally, Ashley and Scepter will get down in the four-point stance. On third down, pressure zone. Lastinger lobs it over the middle. It is incomplete. Pass intended for Simmons. Lastinger had had a, a little more time. He would have seen Clarence K deep and free. But Penn State was able to generate enough pressure forcing him to go to the short receiver. Now Georgia will have to kick it on fourth down and seven. 38 and 35 and the two previous punts by Broadway. We can see that uh, how each team has gotten their first downs about like we expect in any case in Georgia going to press the run. Penn State press the pass. Broadway a little better this time gets it to turn over runs by all the way back inside the 10 back to the seven gets one good block gets it back up field and look out look out it's a foot race and Broadway the punter slows him down and the pursuers finally get him Clarence K finally ran him down but Kevin Bow almost blew that one wide open Kevin Bow is one of the top premier punt returners in America 10.8 average and you can see why look at the move young man had a knee operation in 1980 missed most of the 81 season but look at the blocking right there Papenroth number 33 Georgia had a great play there by the kicker I guess that is yes yeah, Broadway. Broadway slows him down enough for K to bring in and make the play it was a 52 yard punt but a 65 yard return that's that's deficit financing Kurt Warner in the middle. And again, good yardage by Warner. Well, Georgia in this position on the field is going to have to gamble, trailing by seven with their defense. They're going to have to blitz, try to create some confusion, get a turnover. They lead the nation in, in uh, they're second in the nation in turnover margin, two per game, 35 interceptions, 11 fumbles. Penn State has not turned it over today. Will Forts came off the field a little while ago hoppling. Nate Taylor is in there at a linebacker spot. Will has not come back for this defensive series. And the play to Joel Coles. He is caught behind the line of scrimmage. And that time, Jimmy Payne and uh, his friend Mr. Gilbert, they loaded it up. Payne, number 87, is going to penetrate the gap, the quickness. As soon as he recognizes the play, he just takes on the blocker. Spiris, number 56, dies recklessly into the feet of uh, one of excuse me Coles the ball back and it's a loss Georgia is so effective in critical situations and throwing the bonus for a loss Knox Culpepper a sophomore linebacker was in for a piece of that action as well the ball is back at the 25 where it is third down and eight and number 81 McCluskey Big Mike jumping offside so that'll back the Lions up five Keith we have Freddie Gilbert a defensive tackle and we also have Jimmy Payne a defensive tackle in the ball game. Those are the two premier rushes and Georgia needs to apply some pressure with a four man foul, rush. Illegal procedure movement on the line offense third down number 59 Jack Lindsay a defensive tackle has gone in a senior for Georgia and Jack Lindsay has been injured most of the season. He's back in there now missed all since the second game. That's the first penalty on Penn State in the ball game. Third down, about 13. Ball is just outside the 30. Blacklitz can stand up, loop to the sidelines, incomplete, intended for Greg Garrity, covering Terry Hogue. Garrity was in the bump with Hogue, was knocked off the field of play. He's protesting now, but. Well, this is good Legal. pass defense, Keith. You're allowed to push the receiver with your hands one time as long as he's in front of you. And that is a good play in my judgment. Hope makes the play, disrupting the pass pattern, breaking the timing is very important when you play a team as effective with a passing game as Penn State is. Fourth down, field goal time. Here's Gunshitano. He's hit one from 37. Now he's going to try one from 47. And from that distance, he's two out of three on the season. Nick's got it in the air. He's got enough leg on it. Hooked it left. So the Georgia defense comes bounding off the field, heartened by the fact that they turned the Lions away with six minutes and 22 seconds to play in the first half. Penn State leads Georgia 10 to 3. And we'll see the Bulldogs with the ball in just a moment. 
That may well turn out to be a big moment in the ball game. We'll just have to wait a long time, obviously, to see. But uh, here is the Georgia defense starting to get the wobbles for a moment against Penn State. But they were able to come up with that one big play. And again, Payne was involved in it. And Georgia takes over the ball after the missed field goal opportunity. First down at their own 30. And it's Walker throwing it up the middle. And Herschel pounding away. Gets it across the 40. And out to a first down. Picked up about 12 yards. Keith, what we saw was a change in their play selection. He wears a padding on his back. You might have seen him when the fellow picked him up there. And I that is put there to keep the, he got too many helmets in the small of the back. When he's twisted and turning and fighting for extra yardage, but personally been going wide on the last play, he ran right at the Penn State defense, and I think that's the weakness of it. Here's Lastinger, handing the ball off. It's hot loose in there and bounding around. Looks like a red shirt may have covered it. The fullback. And uh, Herschel Walker both involved in the play, and the ball came loose. And it looks like number 78 was the man that covered it. That'll be Winfred Hood. Let's see if we can detect what happened with his faulty ball handling. It's the it's option play. Full the fullback, yeah. Well, fullback McCarthy is coming out with the football. Now, number 97, Radisek. Radisek. He just, uh, no, number 55. 55 knocked it loose. That was Roger Puzz. Roger Puzz pulled it out. Georgia was lucky to get it back. And Walker dives it over the middle on second down and nine. Gets about a yard, maybe two. Lastinger's getting pretty good at the uh, belly. He bellies the ball to the fullback and then takes it out and gives it outside to Walker. But once in a while, he's leaving it in there, and once in a while, it's working for them as Ugga takes a deep breath on the sidelines. Keep you in third and long, which is not the position Georgia wants to put themselves in with very little passing attack. Great play defensively for Penn State by Mark Robinson. Had the man over there. It was Broadway. The No, it wasn't either. It was Kay. Watch Robinson make a sensational play. He's coming all the way from free safety. Watch him come all the way and picking up the tight end K right there. And it's going to be just by the, the length of his hand that he knocks the ball down. Look at he deflects it. All he does is K couldn't change and, and handle it. Nobody between K and the goal line. He would have scored, Keith. He would have. Nobody down there. All right, Broadway comes in now. 38, 35, and 52 on his three punch. who had a big return the last time on his way again. Comes back out to the 34, 45-yard punt and brought down by Barry Young for the Bulldogs. And Penn State for the ball. Out close to the 34, first down, leading 10-3. We've got four minutes and 41 seconds to play in the first half. Penn State sitting on a seven-point lead over Georgia. Lions have the ball in between the 34 and 35 markers. And Todd Blackledge sets him up double wide, drops back to throw it. Going deep down the sidelines, he's got Garrity, and Garrity has got a first down for Penn State at the Georgia 30. Ronnie Harris, the left corner, got beat on the play. Garrity is going to run right by Hogue, who has the short coverage, but Georgia is in a two deep defense again. Hogue is going to collision him. The safety man is all the way inside. He's pushed out of bounds, but as long as he tries to get back in bounds immediately, that's legal. Harris has to come all the way across and make the play, but not before the big game. 147 yards for Penn State in the ball game, a net of seven on the ground. So it's the Air Force of the Lions that's working for them right now. Four and a half minutes to go in the first half. Ball just inside the Georgia 30. John Williams. And Johnny muscles his way inside the 20 to the 18 before Jeff Sanchez brings him down. Jeff came in from junior college out in your Belinda, California. A free safety for Georgia. And we've got a Pitt State man shaking up on the play. Dave Laub, uh, the tackle, number 60. Big senior from Fairlawn, New Jersey. McGinnis has been sore, but came up uh, able to play for the ball game, though I didn't think that Joe wanted him to play the whole game, and now Dave Laub uh, leaves for a moment. But he's, he's big enough. He'll be back. 
Keith, on that last play, we saw the versatility of the Penn State offense giving the ball to fullback Williams, and he came close to breaking for the touchdown. There are the numbers rushing and passing for Penn State and Georgia, the comparisons. First down. Georgia 18. Blackledge gives it to Warner, and Kurt is close to the 15. I well, he is really blowing in yeah. there, isn't he? Keith, he is. I'd hate to be calling defensive signals to try to decide whether I'm going to play against the run or the pass in this football team, or whether I'm going to blitz or whether I'm going to defend. Georgia has had very little success getting any rush on the passer with a four-man uh, rushing. Seems like they're going to have to blitz and blitz and blitz, and that's dangerous, risky. They've got Garrity wide left. They've got Kevin Ball at the top of the picture. Williams, the lone remaining back, and they got Warner up in a slot. Last time we saw him in that position, he scored against Notre Dame, and he's going out as a receiver, but it's Williams getting the ball as the lone remaining back and going inside the 10, close to the 8, before Nate Taylor brings him down. Well, Kotz and Sparrows, the left tackle and left guard, are going to open up some kind of hole. Watch Sparrows block the linebacker. Kotz pushes into the inside Gilbert. Look at the hole. Tremendous blocking by the and particular and on the goal line, nearly the goal line uh, area. That's just outstanding by the Penn State offensive line. Now here's something that could be almost bewildering. Total yards for Penn State, 175. But of that 175 yards, Frank, they picked up 167 on first down. Oh, that is, that's incredible. Penalty flags. Kurt Warner with the ball. He's in the end zone. Hang on. Penalty flag. Back at the 10. Offside, defense, decline, touchdown, Penn State. to go in the first half. Stick it in the end zone. Second touchdown for Kurt Warner. Josh Fitano's extra point kick is good. And it's a 16 to 17 to 3 Penn State lead with 2.43 to go as the Lions take it 65 yards in five plays. Let's look at the replay from behind the defense, behind the offense, excuse me, right behind. Watch the blocking, watch Warner as he gets the ball, starts outside, nothing there, plants the foot. Look at the strength of the legs, watch the cutting ability. Watch him start, back up after he hesitates. Gilbert does not make the play number nine. Now for behind, now for behind the defense, watch the blocking. You at home can see exactly what Warner saw. They didn't make the cut. As he comes back inside of the Georgia pursuit, Taylor number 47 gets blocked. Look at the hole again. Outstanding work by the offensive line that was rebuilt by Dick Anderson, the offensive line coach for Penn State. From large graduation losses of last season. Penn State now lining up to kick it off and going deep for Georgia. Herschel Walker. He is going back to return this kick. It is the first time in this game that we've seen it. The reason for that as much as anything, the fact that Kearney Norris uh, got caught uh, a little short on his curfew and is not suited up for the ball game. So Walker is back there to return the kickoff. Georgia needs field position with 2.43 to go in the first half and down by 14 points. Kind of make you swallow a little hard, Frank, when you put your prize back there like that. Because there's so many bodies flying through the air. Going at full speed, and Penn State wants nothing to do with Herschel Walker carrying the ball. Oh, what a mistake that was by Keith Montgomery. The freshman coming across instead of letting the ball go out of bounds and Penn State having to kick it over after a five-yard penalty. The youngster went over and tried to pick it up, touch the ball, it goes out of bounds, and here's Georgia. I just got through saying they needed good field position, and the kid knocks it out of bounds on the eight-yard line. Keith, that you exactly right. The impetus was the kick, and the ball goes on out of bounds. Even though I believe Georgia, had, one of the up men, had touched the ball, uh, it would still be brought back. Mm. Well, this is not where Georgia wants to start. They're going to have to throw some. 
just set up the. Well, they tried the fullback, and McCarthy is just eaten up by Greg Gattuso. Greg Gattuso, number 70, was a fullback in high school and a linebacker, as we've seen so many times. But look at these impressive numbers. What a diversified offense Penn State has shown going the distance 65 yards in such a short time very quick explosive offense they can score from anywhere second down and 12 the ball is back at the six and Walker with it he is to the 10 close to the 11 Walker Lee Ashley and Harry Hamilton Walker Lee Ashley is having a sensational game. Number 37 standing up in a two. Clarence K, number 84, is one of the best blockers that Georgia has. But all that Ashley does, wants to do is just keep his feet so that once Herschel makes the cut, he can separate himself from the blocker and make the play. Third down, eight. Georgia's three out of seven on third down conversions. Going to run it with Walker, and they're not going to get the first down. Broadway's going to have to come on and punt the ball at Penn State with about 120 or so to play in the first half. We're going to should have a very good field position if they handle it all right. And Penn State takes a very quick timeout to save as much time on the clock. And the way they've been completing passes, they are definitely a threat to score again in this half unless Georgia can make the big play. So the Lions will take the full time out and talk things over. 124 to go in the first half. They're leading by 14 and looking for some more. Jim Broadway is on the field now to punt for Georgia on fourth down and five. Four kicks, he's averaging 45 yards. A little less than a minute and a half to play in the first half. Broadway is going to hit it on around the two. We watch it from the end zone. Hit it up near the four. Hangs it up near midfield for Bow. Oh, he, he, is a, he is a gambler. He just doesn't believe in uh, sticking the arm up and saying, hey, save my body from misery. He's trying to break the big one. He almost did a Get moment ago, and he almost popped out with that one. Watch the wall of blockers, Robinson and uh, number 43. They're protecting him, giving him time. You see three white shirts that are giving him a chance. That, uh, I would say... Uh, I've seen that punt return used many times. Keith. That's what we did. We blocked, dropped three men to give the, re the receiver a chance to get started. It's a good scheme. And here's Penn State. First down at the Georgia 44 with a minute and 14 to play in the first half. Blacklitz back quickly. Goes short to the tight end McCluskey. McCluskey breaks away from Sanchez and then steps out of bounds. But I think he, in fact, he does have a first down. I want to commend Joe Paterno for the strategy. He came in this ball game. He was going to win. He felt like he had the advantage with speed receivers over the Georgia secondary. And you can see the blitz was on. And Sanchez, the free safety, was late coming up and trying to cover the tight end McCloskey. And McCloskey gets away from him for that reason after the completion for extra yardage. Blackledge again. Now he's getting a little heat. Trying to set up a screen. Johnny Williams never got a hand. John could never quite get a hold of it. Incomplete forward pass. Will Forts has a sprained ankle. We may not see him. At least not in this half. This is what we have for you at halftime. We see both fans talk with both coaches. And have the 1982 Chevrolet Most Valuable Offensive Player Award and check the news about the world. Keith uh, Ron Williams, the fullback, uh, injured his ankle and left the game. Cole's replacing him. Joel Cole. They've got Warner up in the slot. Give the ball instead to Coles. And Coles is caught at the line of scrimmage by Crow. And Jim Crow rides him down. Jimmy got him at the 31. And Joel was able to drag him along for a couple of yards to about the 28. Well, that was a real surprise call with uh, less than a, than a minute to play and the way they've been throwing the football and George has had very little success defending against it. Uh, you would think that they would go for what they've been doing all year. 70% of the time throwing on third, second and long. 55 seconds to play in the first half. ABC's Wide World of Sports. Harlem Globetrotters coming to New York. Return to the big city. 
work out with the Rockettes, go to Harlem, and have a lot of fun. Then the men's World Cup downhill skiing, the world's best skiers at Hanencom in Kitzbühel. ABC's Wide World of Sports starting big for 1983 at 5 Eastern Time. There are the officials talking now with uh, Coach Vince Dooley of the University of Georgia. Penn State has one timeout remaining. Keith, Georgia's got to decide, do we blitz on third and eight and take the chance on um, throwing him for a loss and yet we have to play man for man in the secondary or do we try to get a rush with four men and try to cover them? That's a big decision and it's a critical decision right now. I don't believe Georgia's defensive unit is going to handle Penn State unless they gamble. They're going to have to gamble. Here they come with a blitz. At least they're showing the blitz. And they're coming. Oh, they're coming. Gets it off and it is incomplete. There were two of them. Tommy Thurston, number 60, was the man that had a hold of him. But there were four of them coming. Dale Carver, 96, was coming from the outside, and then Thurston took the inside route. This is the advantage of having a quarterback who's big and strong. He takes the tackles, doesn't go down. Watch Carver, number 96. He had Thurston right there, number, excuse me, number 48. Uh, yes, Cole Pepper, Pepper. But he doesn't go down. He finally gets rid, and that's the difference of 15 yards on the uh, field goal attempt. Don Chitano, 45 yard attempt. It's up. Plenty of leg. It's good. Doug Strang gave him a perfect hold. And Nick Gunchitano nails it. Forty-four seconds to go in the first half of the Lions lead 20 to 3, and that is the longest field goal of Gunchitano's career. He's only a sophomore. His longest prior to that one was 41. That one was for 45. Well, let's talk about Georgia's offense or the lack of passing. Very definitely, we coaches can fully appreciate as we look at the, the reaction of, of the kicker and the holder. Don Satano, he's a happy young man being congratulated. <laughs> Picking his tee up before he even got the signal. But Georgia has, sooner or later, the absence of passing will uh, make your running counterproductive. And that's what's happened uh, in this second quarter. Once Penn State could shut down the passing, they can concentrate and think run with the linebackers, think run with the defensive end. Everybody think run. Safety man Robinson up tackling on the line of scrimmage. Very, very difficult to move the ball. It's Joe Paterno. I know he's very proud. There he is in the bowl games. And I might mention that in three previous Sugar Bowl games, Joe Paterno has lost all three of them, scored only one touchdown in the three games. Now he has, what, two touchdowns and two field goals in the first half. Here's the kickoff for the Lions, and Herschel Walker among those back there to receive it. And this time, uh, <laughs> this time, Keith Montgomery lets it go out of bounds. Keep the, the strategy that Penn State is using, what we call a deep onside kick. Kick the ball high and across the field, hoping that the uh, defensive man, uh, the re receiving back will come up and catch it. If not, one of your men running down the right side might recover it. A deep onside kick and keeping the ball away from Herschel at the same time. Of course, no time expired. Nobody touched the ball. 44 seconds to go. Penn State out to a 20 to three lead. That's Walker at the bottom of the picture and Keith Montgomery at the top. Montgomery is a flyer. And in the returns, he's averaged a little better than 21. Herschel, of course, you know all about him. He's returned two kickoffs this year for an 18-yard average, but young Montgomery is one that's been whittling and sharpening his teeth on the kick return. Now let's see if Penn State, you know they don't want to kick it to Herschel, but they might. Keith, I believe I'm correct in saying this is the first time all season long that Georgia has been behind more than one touchdown. They do have a problem right now, don't they? Yes, they do. Well, it's Montgomery. No, it is Walker. Here he comes. Looking for a block on the sidelines. Out of bounds. He's out of bounds up around the... Uh, <laughs> up around the 35 when uh, the Penn State kicker, Monka, started forward. 
Walker and Montgomery reversed <laughs> positions on the field, so Herschel wound up with it. And he got a decent return out of it. He got it up to the 34. 39 seconds to go in the first half. George has got a lot of work to do in changing their strategy and responding at this situation during the halftime. Last year. Passes away. Good to Kay. Kay. Park at midfield. Tumbles on the Penn State side of it. Georgia with two timeouts remaining. Stopping the clock. 32 seconds to play in the first half. So Georgia spends a timeout as we take another look. Kay goes right out in the flat. Penn State is trying to to concede the short pass, cover deep, number 84, Clarence K catches the ball. He's a big, strong youngster, 235 pounds, good runner with the ball, made a great run against Clemson to set up their second field goal. Radisek, the linebacker, comes over and makes the play. That's the third completion for Lastinger in the ball game out of 10 attempts. And he he had the uh, the one play where he overthrew Kay in the end zone when yes. he was wide open. Could have had a touchdown instead of the three points. I think we should point out this graphic that uh, Georgia has been an outstanding second half team. And the reason I think that they have is that when you press the running game, you, you seem to wear the opponents out. And uh, those short yards become short games become long games. Georgia's going to have to think about this strategy and make some very critical and maybe reversal types of decisions during the halftime and what they normally would do. The football is sitting just over midfield on the Penn State side. Right a second, gone to the sidelines to talk to the Penn State defensive uh, coaches. And he's come back now. And here comes George. Herman Archie, who has had two passes on his hands and dropped both so far, is the wide man. Last stinger's pass is away. The pass is incomplete intended for Clarence K. They had K out there, and Frank, they had exactly what they wanted. They had Biondi, who's 5'8, out there against Clarence K, who's 6'3, 225. Archie had turned back inside and put a block on a man, so they had the matchup they wanted. They just couldn't get the ball. Well, they, you're going to see that last thing is coming too wide. Uh, he runs right into Herschel Walker, and therefore he thinks, well, I better get rid of the ball. Kay's wide open rather than calm himself and hit him because Clay, as Key said, was wide, wide open. Second down, 10, 29 seconds to go. Passes away. The pass is caught. And it's good for a first down at the Penn State 36. And that stops the clock at 23 seconds to go in the first half. And uh, the clock will resume unless Georgia spends its last time out when they've got the change down. And Georgia does call timeout. So the Bulldogs now have none left. Archie number 81 is just a freshman. He's probably the fastest of the wide receivers for Georgia. Once again, Penn State is conceding the short pass. The ball is right on the money. Radisek number 97 comes over and makes the play. Beyond it had missed him, had missed the tackle. Radisek saved the possible touchdown. Now we must remember that Kevin Butler has the leg, the strength to kick a field goal. Should Georgia get stopped here, they can always they, they should think about uh, a field goal. Butler can kick it from 50, 60 yards. Well, they've got 23 seconds, so you figure they got three snaps if they had a timeout to spend. So they're going to have to waste some of that time for an incomplete forward pass in order to stop the clock. So let's assume if they don't have any particular success to the sidelines on this play, then they'll have to hurry a play in order to stop the clock and give Butler a shot at it. Chief, we mentioned and you brought out that Georgia has been a one-dimension offense by choice and by the ability the shoulders the, the this ball game is going to rest not on Herschel Walker in my judgment his shoulders but on the ones of Jeff John Lesting of the quarterback in that second half. Well there's the pass the pass is flipped out to Walker and Walker is tumbled down at the 10 the flea flicker how about that. Kevin Harris to Herschel Walker. You're gonna It's right on the 10. Georgia this is a beautiful play. We remember that uh, Oklahoma beat Nebraska for the championship a few years ago. The quick hurl pass to the end and the lateral to Herschel. 10 seconds to go. Loop to the corner. It is touchdown. A touchdown to Herman Archie. Can you believe it? Penn State 
Drake would go to the clubhouse with a 20 to 3 lead at halftime, dominating the ball game. But then all of a sudden, bang, bang, here's Georgia threatening, and then they work the play to Harris, to Walker, and with no timeouts remaining, stick it in the end zone on the reception by Archie with five seconds to go. They went six to six yards in 39 seconds. The kick is good. Oh, Frank, that's dynamite to have somebody strike you like that just at halftime. Oh, it can mean a big difference to the, your momentum coming out of the ball game. It will make a big difference. Let's watch the arch in number 81. You're going to see the fade pattern. It's a 101, anticipating, and you get the mismatch. Beyond is the smallest player. Archer is six foot five. Archer is six foot five. Watch him use the advantage of the height. Look how high he goes up. Beyond it had no chance. That is good strategy, good statement calling. Give credit to the Georgia D coaching staff and the execution by last thing of the quarterback. That will help that young man right there, number 12. Look at him. That will give him tremendous confidence. He'll boost his morale going into the second half. Let's look at it again. It's a sensational play. Remember, Georgia had no more timeouts. Less than 20 seconds on the clock. The ball has to be thrown in the minute that, that Archer leaves the line of scrimmage. The fade route to his outside shoulder. And the mismatch. It was perfect. It's set up perfect, Keith. Don't know of anything that I've seen set up any better in many, many times. Well, that portends some excitement for the first half, for the second half. Well, the Georgia Partisans had been very, very quiet up until right now. Five seconds to go. 20 to 10, Penn State. Butler will kick off. Nails it. Bow fumbles it at the five. He's down at the 16, and the half is over. Now here's Jim Lampley. Joe, until just a few minutes ago, I was getting ready to congratulate you on a near-perfect first half. I'm sure that Georgia drive coming at the moment it did was the last thing you wanted to see. Well, you know, Georgia's a very fine football team, and that was a great drive. They're not going to die easily, and I, I think it's a great football game. Everybody ought to be enjoying it. I, uh, we got to go back in there now and suck it up and make sure we don't let that momentum get carried away. But uh, we played a good, solid first half, and... Uh, uh, they made a couple big plays in that drive, but I would be all right. Any specific changes you see that you may have to make, perhaps? Big plays on uh, as a result of their coming. Uh, we just got to stay with what we're doing, and we'll be all right. We'll make a couple little adjustments. Okay, don't let them get complacent. I'm sure they won't after that last drive. Joe Paterno, the coach. Would it? Yes, it is. I believe that's correct. Yeah. I was impressed with uh, Vince Dooley's remarks. I think he's exactly right. He's got to move the ball and uh, stay in this ball game where they don't have to get into passing situations and desperate. Massimo Mongo will kick it off now for Penn State. Herschel Walker and Keith Montgomery are the deep people to receive as we go with a second half of play. And they still won't give it to Herschel. It's bobbled around and it is picked up by McCarthy, the fullback. And Chris gets it up across the 35, out to around the 36, maybe the 37. We'll see where exactly they put the markers down as we open with Lastinger. Walker, Chris McCarthy at fullback, who just returned that kick. Chuck Jones and Kevin Harris. The offensive front, Harper, Weaver, Radloff, Brown, McIntyre, and Norris Brown. With a lot of the time, you've got your double tight end alignment in there with Clarence Kay at one end and uh, Norris Brown at the other. And now you've got Chuck Jones, who just run out of your picture as a wide man. Penn State is showing the five-man defensive front right now. And penalty flags fly on it as contact was made along the line of scrimmage. So we'll see what that's about. It's going to be a procedure call against Georgia. Bulldogs were not set. Here's the secondary uh, defensively for Penn State. That's a whole bunch of them there. And uh, we zero in on five foot eight inch, 170 pound Dan Biondi, four year Every letterman. Ball foul. Move it Roger the Jackson, the, the cornerback. First down. And uh, Harry Hamilton, whose name we've called a lot tonight. Mark Robinson, who's made two big plays for Penn State, is your strong, is uh, free safety. With uh, Harry Hamilton being your strong safety. 
So it's first down and 15. The ball moves back to the Georgia 31. The procedure call going against the Bulldogs. And Lastinger gives to Herschel Walker. And Walker is zeroed by Greg Gattuso. Boy, he just locked his legs as he tried to make his cut. Steve Sefter is the defensive end at 232 pounds. Greg Gattuso, the big redhead who just made that play, 262. Dave Ofer at 239, defensive tackle. And Walker Lee Ashley, who's played a fine ball game at 235. The backers, Ken Kelly, 98, outside at 223. Scott Radisick, 244 in the middle. And Dave Paffenroth at 234 outside. Here's Lastinger on a roll on second down and 15. Up it goes short. The pass thrown up the sidelines and bouncing right in front of Biondi. And there are the numbers at halftime. They, these stats don't really reflect uh, the first half play. Penn State really dominated, but Georgia leads in first down, leads in rushing. We expected that. The Penn State way out front in passing. Penn State leads in total yards. The number of plays and the time of possession are not indicate, indicated of the play because Penn State has had over 11 yards on every first down attempt. Third down and about 16, 17. Lasting a deep drop. Goes over the middle with it, and the pass is complete to Kevin Harris. The ball is at the 45 of Penn State. This is a reversal of strategy. Georgia seldom would throw in the middle, except they have to against Penn State a long yardage, and you're going to see Harris come right in the middle. A beautiful throw. Last thing, got his feet set and laid the ball over the linebackers. Harris is going to come in behind the linebackers deeper than they dare drop or risk drop because they've got to play the draw play on Walker. The defensive backs are back defending deep. The opening was there. First down just short of the Penn State 45 and Walker straight up the middle for about five yards. Now they'll mark him at four. Be second down and six. I tell you Frank you got the feeling I felt it I said it. Uh, yeah I guess what this morning when you and I were sitting visiting that if the youngster last year keeps his point. He could have a big day tonight. This, the key is his performance. He's got to be able to read the coverages, not beat him. His saving grace has not been making and avoiding, not making mistakes. If he can do that, they've got a chance. Going deep for Archie. He dropped it. Oh, my goodness. They got the matchup they wanted. They got Archie at 6-5 against Biondi, and that's the third pass that he's had on his hands. He caught a touchdown pass, but he should have caught that ball. You can see R2, six foot five, running right by Biondi. He has more speed and more height. The ball is right on the target. No reason for R2 to drop that ball. Just took his eyes off it. Third one, as Keith has already mentioned, that he's dropped in this ball game. That was not a difficult uh, reception. You certainly can't fault Lasting on it, I'll tell you that. Ball is at the 41. It's third down and six. Uh, interference, uh, but Harris comes down with the ball anyway because the Penn State man had tackled him. And Biondi is asking for some help. He is now going to the sidelines and saying, Coach, you're picking on me. Get somebody up out of here. I gotta, I gotta get a breather. Keith, you're always trying in your passing game to get the physical mismatches, but the big thing is last finger's confidence. As uh, Harris is going to go down and curl, the short man Clay is in the flat, and uh, Hamilton covers Kay in the flat, leaving the open receiver, Harris. And you can see the interference, meaning contact before the ball got to the receiver, but more importantly, a critical first down. Ball is just short of the Penn State 30. It's first down, Georgia. And the ball goes to Herschel. Trying to go to the outside. Shakes a leg to the right, cuts it back inside, and gets down to about the 26. Give him four. Chris Sidner made the tackle. The point should be mentioned for all of our football fans. Penn State's defense is predicated on stopping the run and doing the best they can against the pass. Let me give you an illustration. Boston College passed for 595 yards against this football team. Hostetler from West Virginia passed for 350 yards. Walker again. And he's to the 23. The point I'm trying to make is that sooner or later, Georgia will be able to possibly hurt them passing in those intermediate zones. 
Georgia right now is looking at third down and about three. Might be a short three. With 11 minutes and 50 seconds, and Herschel now closing in on 100 yards in the ball game. See if they stay with the book. The book says run here. Outside the wall. Got his first down. They're punishing him, but he seems to shrug it off. He's a good execution on the option play, but wide receiver Harris makes a tremendous block on Biondi. Watch Harris. You receivers on Georgia football team are taught to do more than catch the ball. Look at the roll block by Harris, number 20, which frees Walker to make the first down with the run. The ball is parked just inside the 17. Walker now is over 100 yards. 22 carries, 101. Fullback. McCarthy is just short. Just short. Whoa, did he blow through there. Mark Robinson got him. Stopping the touchdown. Warren Gray. Watch the left side of your screen. Watch Gray block over. He turns him inside. Watch McIntyre, number 74, block Bradisek all the way back. Bradisek could not make the play. Tremendous blocking. Quick hitter by McCarthy, the blocker for Herschel Walker on most of the occasions. Down to the one. They are just short of the goal line. First down and goal to go, and Barry Young is in there. Two fullbacks. Penalty flags. Penalty flags all over the place. Georgia ran on the quick count. I'm not sure that what the call is going to be, but Georgia ran on the quick count for the first time during the ball game. They don't need a penalty. I think they might have one. Nope, it's against Penn State. Yep, yep. Encroachment offside. Penn State, that's, that's about all a defensive man can do when it's first down and one against Herschel. You've got to get the jump on the offense. Win that battle of six inches of that neutral zone, you have a chance. But you have to stay on side. Touchdown here for Georgia. And the party's on again. And offside on the defense. First down, half the distance to the goal. That means the ball's about six inches away, <laughs> if that much. What a drive Georgia has put together. Throwing and running, mixing it up. That's what you have to do against the Penn State defensive scheme. Two fullbacks in front of Walker. Herschel's got it. Penalty flags again. He's in the end zone. But the penalty flags are all over the place. Hang on. It's going to be Penn State's penalty. Georgia will refuse it, and it's touchdown. Typical Georgia game. They look like they're struggling. They look like they might get beat, but they come have come back and won 33 of the last 35 games. Watch the blocking. The offensive lineman must get low. If Walker's going over the top, the offensive blockers get underneath the defensive man. That's exactly what happened. And Walker scores the touchdown. Butler is in for the extra point try. Jim Broadway, the punter, does the holding. Good. 10 minutes and 37 seconds to play in the third quarter. Penn State 20, Georgia 17. 78,124. A confirmed attendance. And a party is on. Both sides yelling now as Georgia sticks it in the end zone. 20 to 17, a three point Penn State lead. 10 37 to go third quarter. And the Bulldogs' butler will kick it off. Bow and Mumford are deep people for Penn State. That's a high hanger. That's a yard deep for Bow. Four people in front of him. He almost pops out of there again. Oh, he is a dandy. But the Bulldogs get him up at the 18. So this is how Penn State will answer the call with the first defensive series of the second half. Blackledge, Warner Williams, Jackson Garrity. Look out for Jackson. We haven't heard from him lately. Up front, McCloskey. Another fellow's been pretty quiet lately. Keller, Sparrows, Battaglia, Laub, and Cox. Keith, I look for Penn State to come back and try to strike very quickly. Quiet the crowd down and try to regain the momentum. 
You got Jackson and Garrity wide to the top of the picture. Ball goes to Kurt Warner. And Warner is up to the 25. He got about eight yards. The Georgia defensive group, Ronnie Harris. Cornerback came from San Diego Junior College. Anthony Flack, first freshman ever to start for Vince Dooley from Greensboro, North Carolina. Terry Hogue, the only Texan on the Georgia squad. And Jeff Sanchez came to <clears throat> play free safety from California Junior College. All again goes to Warner. Good. Blocking up the middle, and Kurtz got a first down at the 36. Here's from the end zone. Look at the blocking. You can see the the law. Dave Laub, number 60, makes a tremendous block on Thurston, number number 60 also. And you see Warner's cutting ability. He cuts right back. Black misses him finally. Some of his teammates get him down, but not before the first down. At the 36, Warner now 11 carries for 71 yards. Georgia still playing a four-man front as Carver drops off into the short zone area. Blackledge goes short to John Williams. And Williams is caught and dragged down at about the 39. The defensive guys up front for Georgia, Dale Carver, a 215-pound end. Freddie Gilbert, 230-pound tackle. Kevin Jackson in at the middle guard position, 245. Tim Crow at 235. And Stan Dooley, who scored a touchdown after Carver had blocked the kick, well, gets Clemson. In the opener, Tommy Thurston and Will Forge. Will Forge is out of there with a sprained ankle. We may not see him. Nate Taylor's doing the playing right now, along with Knox Culpepper. Blackledge on second down and seven gives to John Williams. Williams is thrown off his route and then gets tangled up, and Jimmy Payne puts him down. Keith Will Forge, number 42, is, is back in the ball game. Evidently, it, his ankle did heal, and uh, he's playing the linebacker position. They need his quickness, because he can work that short zone pretty well. Both Georgia linebackers have the speed. They're not very big. Forge is less than 200 pounds, but his deep pitch is he can get back in those deep curl areas that Penn State attacks so effectively. It's third down and seven for the Lions at the 40. And Todd Blackledge. Getting some pressure, and they've got him. Carver, Dale Carver. The key for Georges in this football game is putting some pressure on Blackledge. You're going to see the blitz first to number 60, but Carver from the right of your screen runs right over the blocker, number 96, and the defensive backs have done a great job. Carver and Thurston gets to him for the sack. Third time they've been able to put Blackledge down. Jacques Amaro comes in to punt for the Lions. Boss is back inside the 30. Well, gets it out of there, and it's a Howard's a shot running Jimmy Harrell way back to the 15, the 16. And Harrell comes across the 20 and a penalty flag. Might have a clip. 55 yard high hanging punt, and I think Georgia clipped. Doc Amaro had only been averaging 38 yards during the season, but he is really booming that ball. Let's see what the call is. His kicks have been 55 yards, 46 and 55 so far today. And that's illegal blocking. So George is going to back up some on the penalty, trailing by three. Timeout. It's a funny feeling when you're 17, just finished school. Georgia will start. The football is just inside. They're on nine. It's 7.20 to go in the third quarter. The illegal block, blocking below the waist on the return. Backing him up to five. Now it is Wisham, number six, coming wide to the right side along with Archie. Double wide right, Lastinger gives the ball to Herschel Walker. And Walker is brought down at the seven for a loss of two yards, and Greg Gattuso makes the tackle. Keith Coke. Coaches are always talking about field position, and Georgia has had atrocious field position throughout this game, but Georgia has been able this year to come from behind in seven of the 11 games. They find some way to win. They look like they're struggling. They don't seem to be doing anything extremely well, but they come back and win.
Stinger out of the end zone. Throws it as far as he can. Archie down there, and it is intercepted. Picked off by Mark Robinson. Herman Archie lost sight of the ball. Robinson gets loose, and he's a powerhouse of a runner as he brings the ball all the way back inside the 40 to the 37. Archie lost sight of the ball, and Robinson just plucked it off. Well, Archie was getting pushed as he was going down the boundary, and uh, finally, you can see Robinson, number 32, is an All-American football player this year. As soon as he establishes eye contact with the football, he becomes the receiver. He has the advantage, and you can see what a fine football player he is. Archie cannot get him down, and uh, he heads north and south and makes a fine return. So just inside the Georgia 38, here's Penn State operating now with six and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Georgia turning it over. Blackledge wants to go quick. He goes to the short screen pass for Kurt Warner. And a fine play by Terry Hogue. And a loss maybe of a half a yard or so on the play. Penalty flag on the field. Penn State had, uh, has a penalty coming. I don't know exactly what it is. That's what it is. Terry Hogue is one of the great football players that Georgia's had in a long time. He's a consensus All-American. He intercepted 12 passes this year. In talking to Bill Lewis, the defensive coordinator, yesterday, he said Terry can anticipate the passes so beautifully. He can read the, the opposing quarterbacks. He gets the break, and he's around the football. That was a perfect illustration. Hogue, number 14, is coming up, and you, up the right of the screen, you're going to see a clip by the lineman coming out. We'll try to get his number blocking from the rear. Illegal, dangerous. That's why it's in the rule book. 59, Batavia, the center, makes the illegal block. Now it's first and 25. Big break for Georgia Keith. Yep. Yes, it was. First and 25. In penalties, Penn State's been flagged four times for 36, Georgia four times for 26. The ball comes all the way back to the Penn State 47. Jimmy Payne and Freddie Gilbert, the premier rushes for Georgia, both in the ball game. Oh my, they move up into about a seven-man front there, too, as Kurt Warner goes hunting for the sidelines and crosses midfield, and he's tumbled out of bounds at about the 48. Georgia defense, similar to to uh, Penn State's, they scramble, they fight, they do everything they can to, to create confusion and get penetration and throw the ball carriers for a loss. Georgia's not big enough to line up head up with the Penn State offense. They just out, they out, they outweigh about 30 pounds per man. They get in the gaps and try to penetrate and get on the shoulder and penetrate as we look at Joe Paterno. Don't worry, don't blame him. Second down, about 22. Georgia almost jumped. They got away with it. There's a little pass bounced in front of John Williams. They're trying to set up a screen for John Williams with Kurt Warner and Battaglia out in front of him. And the pressure was put on by Tim Crow, and Crow got him, forcing Blackledge to get rid of it quickly. But Georgia was offside. They did not get back out of the neutral zone no, before. I before the ball was snapped. I didn't see the flag come, but uh, it looked to me like they were out. And uh, You can see that... Uh, While you watch this, I want to interject one thing here, though. You see this, obviously, uh, encroachment. But Kurt Warner is hobbling off the field. Kurt Warner is holding the back of his right leg. It looks like hamstring trouble. And Penn State's big running back is leaving the ball game. I thought that perhaps a little more important than the encroachment there. The Keith, uh, Kurt Second Warner had a pull muscle last year and missed part of the season. Pull muscles are things that are slow to get well, and uh, they are very, very dangerous to, to play when they are tight and they feel the, the leg pulling in that part of the... So you take him out of their uh, offensive scheme of things, it, it's, it becomes a little different ball game, doesn't it? Now you've got to move Johnny Williams back into that tailback position probably. Right now, it's Blackledge back to throw. Todd wants to go over the middle deep, and he's going over the middle for McCluskey. Can't hang on. Gave it a great try. Big Mike went up and got a hand on it, but couldn't pull it down. You can see McCluskey has the speed. 
Bill Lewis, a defensive coordinator, said, hey, we can, their tight end is just about as fast as their wide receiver. Carver is a defensive end trying to cover it. There's a mismatch in speed, but Carver stays close enough that forces the ball to be thrown high and above even the six-foot-five reach of McCloskey, who makes a great effort. He hits his hand. Could have been caught, but it would have been a sensational reception. There's Kurt Warner on the sideline. Double wide top of the picture. Kitty Jackson coming back toward the ball. Blackwood straight back. Can't get rid of it. Freddie Gilbert, number 90. Jimmy Payne, number 87. Jimmy Payne, number 87, has been a Southeastern Conference pick for three years. Watch why. He has persistence. He makes great effort. They, you block him every once in a while. You knock him down. He gets up. He's not going to give up. He's going to come right after Blackledge, and along with his teammate, Freddie Gilbert, they sack him on third and long. And Giacomaro is in the punt. Keith, that's what we call a coverage sack. The defensive backs did an outstanding job. Blackledge had nowhere to go with the ball. Giacomaro spins it up. Harrell calls for a fair catch and makes it at the Georgia 15. Georgia's got the ball, but the Bulldogs still have poor field position. 5-0-1 to play in the third quarter. And Penn State leading the Bulldogs by a score of 20 to 17. I'm told that young lady is uh, is the favorite lady friend of one John Lestinger, the Georgia quarterback. Quarterbacks always get the prettiest girls. <laughs> <laughs> ball is at the 15. Where it is Georgia's ball first down. Penn State leading by three. Georgia trying to spread them out a little bit by sending a man way wide to the top. Give the ball inside to Herschel Walker. And Walker remains pretty well controlled by Penn State in this ball game. The most important instrument for Georgia in this ball game, I think we've said before, is last thing of the quarterback. He's going to have to make some big plays, as he did right before the half, and as he did right after the half when Georgia came back and scored two unanswered touchdowns, trailing 23, making it 20 17. We're told that Kurt Warner has a mild case of cramps in that right leg, and Kurt says he will be able to play. Jim Lampley checking with him. Here's last thing on a roll left, keeps it. Up the middle he goes, dives for the marker, and then might have gotten him just short of it. Roger Puzz, uh, number 55, Greg Gattuso, Ken Kelly all trying to pin him down before he got to the first down, and they stopped him. Last thing, it has 4-6 speed. It's a rollout pattern. On this part of the field, if the receiver's not wide open, he's schooled to just tuck the ball under and use his running ability. And you see he makes nice yardage, gets under the linebackers to fall forward for extra yardage, close to the first down. Needs about a yard and a half. Guess who? He didn't make it. Walker did not make it. Penn State defense made a tremendous, tremendous play. Penetrating against an experienced Georgia offensive line. No yard, no game. There's no chance. That was a relatively unimaginative series by Georgia. When you look at the the scouting report, you find that Georgia runs the ball on third and short 98% of the time, and Penn State played this. Thinking run, thinking gaps, trying to stop the short yardage attempt. 3.20 to go, third quarter. Broadway to punt it. Snaps good. Kicks out of there. Not a particularly good kick. Bow comes up, calls fair catch, and sits down at the 41. Kevin came up and handled that knuckler pretty well. After a 34-yard punt, he got a timeout. We'll be right back. He's gone to that sitting, talking with uh, the members of the coaching staff upstairs, trying to sort things out for the next offensive series right now. It is up to the Bulldog defense to hold on to Penn State. Lions leading 20 to 17 with 3.11 to go in the third quarter. They had a 20 to 3 lead at one time. Georgia getting one touchdown at the closing moments of the first half and a touchdown in the opening moments of the second half. Close it to three. Blackledge gives to John Williams. Uh, it was a busted play. Todd turned around and started to go one way, and uh, by the time uh, he was able to sort it out and get it to Williams, Dale Carver, this man, number 96, banged him. Coming from the outside, 
free. The play was supposed to go the other way, to the left, away from Carver, and uh, finally Williams had to come back and get the ball, and uh, Carver was right there on the spot to stop him for no gain. And a second down and ten. Skeeter Nichols is in a tailback now. Warner has not come back as yet. Nichols is in there. He is a sophomore from Cambridge, Maryland. Long count, probably checking off. Blackledge back to throw. Wants to go down the pipe. Finally does, and the pass is incomplete, intended for John Williams. And Todd Blackledge takes a lick from number 90, Freddie Gilbert. ABC's NFL Monday Night Football, Dallas and Minnesota. They are going to play in Minnesota in the dome. They fixed the hole in the roof, and they'll play it at 9 Eastern time, January 3rd. The Cowboys and the Vikings here on ABC. Uh, Blackledge is out of where is Blackledge did he leave the game or are they no, just no, he's still in. Hand. No, he's still there, but I saw him looking at that hand, Frank. Penn State is one out of eight on third down conversions. Surprisingly. And well, he's gonna put it up, so I guess the hand's all right. Gilbert's after him, Gilbert gets it. See, that's what that's again what we call coverage sack. Blackledge, France watches. He has a good four, four and a half seconds. Give credit to that secondary. The receivers are going all around. Finally, Gilbert, who was a track man in high school, comes all the way across and catches Blackledge for the loss. That's the fifth time now they've put him on his back. So they've sacked him five times. And Penn State's got to punt it. Penn State has not scored, and this is the third quarter. Straight up by Giacomaro. And he shanked out of bounds. He shanked it too, Keith. Right up the silo. Not much in it. And Georgia gets the ball now, and they get good field position. With a minute and 37 seconds to go in the third quarter, it was an 18-yard punt. Fundamental flaws in the kicking game and mistakes can beat a great football team, take them right out of it. This is by far the best field position that Georgia has started on any of their nine possessions so far in this game. And field possession is field position is important. McCarthy, the fullback. Herman Archie coming wide to the bottom of the picture. He's that big wide receiver, 6'5. Lastinger gives it to Walker. Walker trying to get to the sidelines. He gets two yards. Boy, I'll tell you, every time Herschel Walker has moved today, Harry Hamilton. <laughs> has been right there step for step for step. That's Kurt Warner still on the sidelines. Keith, I think French. we should point out that uh, the Yondi is not in the ball game. The, no, he, young, left. he has left and, and his substitute, Septa, has come into the ball game. The mismatch may no longer be there that Georgia took advantage of earlier in the quarter and at the halftime. Last finger keeping. Gets to midfield. They'll be looking at third and five. There's Warner trying to stretch that right leg out. You don't want to go out there if that cramp is still there because you can wind up with a terrible spasm. Really painful. Against many football teams, Georgia could press the running game in this situation and do well. Penn State lines up thinking run, sacrificing pass coverage. Now they've weighed the third down and probably will throw here. He's got Archie, but he's waited too long. Now he's got to run for his life, gets it off, throws it in the crowd, and is intercepted. Very poor decision on Lastinger's part. He, he had Archie open, sliding across, and then he decided to run it off to the right side, which to a large degree took him away from his primary uh, four receivers. We can see Hines 52 is putting a little uh, pressure on him. And there's Walker Lee, actually, number 37, chasing him. Doesn't allow that stinger to get set and really throw the ball with any accuracy. But once again, All-American Robinson makes the interception. Here he is, free safety, just playing the football. All he's doing is watching the quarterback. And as soon as he throws the ball, he's going to go to it like a center fielder or a left fielder on this occasion. Mark Robinson, number 32. That's his second interception, second turnover by Georgia. Penn State gets the football back, first down at their own 18-yard line with 28 seconds remaining to play in the third quarter. 
Penn State has not had a turnover in this ball game and Georgia going into this game at 46 for the season over four per game average. And apparently the clock didn't roll so they're taking just a moment here to run some seconds off of it. Seconds that are agreeable in the judgment. In fact, the official clock really is kept to the back judge. So he was the one that picked it up and said, run it down to 17. Blackledge in the first half had 160 yards. In the second half so far, Todd has produced three yards. What do you attribute that to? I think the pass rush, a combination of a good pass rush, forcing Blackledge to throw the ball before he wanted to, good coverage by the secondary. Um, and and getting some sacks after the the uh, quarterback Blackledge had no one to throw to. There's his his numbers for the game. Most of that is he said in the first half. All but what three yards? Yep, three yards. That's incredible. What a turnaround! But football games are like this. I've seen a many. We just turn completely around. From the 18, first down, Penn State. Kurt Warner back in the ball game to the 26. Kevin Jackson, senior from Cartersville, Georgia, brings it down. Kurt Warner has a different gait than the other backs. He's right through there and makes yardage with very little block. Third quarter is over. We will continue after this commercial message and a word from our TV channel 40 Springfield. Keith Jackson has been momentarily disposed, and I'll take over the play-by-play -play until he returns. Starting the fourth quarter, Penn State leads 20 to 17. Second down and two from their own 27-yard line. Georgia defense has played exceptionally well in the third quarter, holding Penn State scoreless. The stats, as we look at, Georgia has gained dramatically 16 first downs to 11, lead in dramatically in rushing. Penn State still ahead in passing. Georgia total yardage, two turnovers for Georgia. Penn State did not capitalize on either. Second and two. Blackledge has it. He hands off to Williams very quickly up the middle. Stopped it for a very short game. But I believe that he did make the first down. Linebacker Will Forts was in on the play. First down for Penn State. As we start the fourth quarter, Georgia trailing Penn State 20 to 17. Keith Jackson is back now. <laughs> the element of poise involved here, so important on first down for Penn State. And here goes Kurt Warner. And Warner breaking over the left side, running behind Cox and McGinnis. Wilson and Laub, that's where they all work. And once in a while, the big center, Battaglia, comes over and looks like Warner is still having some trouble with the leg cramps. Now, you want to rub those things out because they just get worse and worse and worse as the day goes on if you don't get them out of there. Sometimes you can't. 14 minutes and 27 seconds to play. Penn State sitting on a three-point lead, and we're going to have to take a timeout now for Kurt Warner. Warner with 95 yards on 14 carries. It Kurt Warner was able to get up and run off the field after getting the cramp rubbed out. Skeeter Nichols comes in at tailback, replacing him. And Kenny Jackson, who has been very quiet for Penn State, is wide at the bottom of the picture on first down from the 41. Blackledge gives the ball to Mickle. And immediately, the Georgia Bulldogs tackle the ball. They, Will Forts, in particular, reached in there and tried to get a hold of the ball, and so did Terry Hogue, figuring the man coming in cold off the bench might turn it loose. As John Lastinger, thinking about what he's got to do when he gets back in the ball game, but Keith, it's very obvious. Penn State has changed their strategy. They have run the ball for the last uh, what seven plays consecutively yep. Yep. and they're moving it second down gain of four on that carry by Nichols second down and six Warner is back you can keep Kurt Warner in there your running game is as potent as anybody and here's Warner going to the outside and gets a first down for Penn State 
as he reaches the Georgia 48. Jeff Sanchez finally got him out. The third consecutive first down, running the ball. Old friend, David Hartman, out on the sideline with the Nittany Lions. Joe Paterno personally invited David to come watch the ball game from that vantage point. I offered him some cut, but he said no, he could handle it. As it is noisy down there. Warner now, 15 carries on 101 yards, two touchdowns, first down, Penn State, Georgia 48. Lions have got a drive going here, a time-consuming effort, too. But now Blackledge is going to put it up on first down. He's going for the bundle! Garrity! Touchdown! talked about mismatches uh, physical this was a mental mismatch a senior Greg Garrity running right by the freshman Tony Flack number eight he misjudged the pattern he came up when he should have been retreating and covering deep and uh, Garrity ran right by him. Well, 48 yards and a touchdown three receptions 111 yards for Greg Garrity and here's your extra point drive Stefano nails it. At 13-16, the play of the football game, Penn State can take a deep breath. The lead is going back to 10. 27 to 17. And watch this catch by Garrity. It's a play action fake, faking the to one and throwing back. And watch how deep and behind you see Garrett to go right by number eight. What a beautiful throw and catch. You couldn't ask for anything any better. From the end zone, the fake is to your left, meaning throw back. We're going to go back against the grain and flack the freshman playing against the senior, Garrity. You're going to see him run right by him, but the beautiful arch on the ball and the stretch, the leap, the catch by senior Greg Garrity. Now, Greg Garrity's daddy played for Penn State. He was a walk-on. And his daddy had caught 54 passes for his career. Going into coming into this ball game, this young man had beat his daddy by one, 55. And uh, of course, he's had some a great game today. Watch him concentrate on the ball, look it into the arms, touchdown. Great camera work, man. Great camera work. So now. A little bit of the air has gone out of the Georgia comeback balloon here. See if the Bulldogs can muscle it up and start one more time. 13-16 left to play in the ball game. Massimo Manka will kick it off. It is Herschel Walker and Keith Montgomery, the deep people for Georgia. Go to Montgomery at the five. Lost his footing. I guess maybe he was trying to make a cut or something, but. He just simply stumbled and fell down. Six plays, setting up the touchdown pass by running on seven consecutive plays. Total offense for Penn State. They've been going ahead of Georgia, 286 to 282. On first down, Georgia, excuse me, Penn State has made 272 yards on first down. 14 total on the other downs. That's remarkable, Pete. It really is. The first down has been their big, big play all day. Lastinger gives the ball inside to Chris McCarthy at the fullback, and he gets one yard. Ken Kelly, 98. Ken Kelly was involved in the defensive switch that uh, made this defensive team for Penn State. In the last six ball games, they've only given up 48 points. Penn State man down. Can't get his number. I don't want to guess. They've got a timeout car. It's it is Ofer. Dave Ofer is the man shaking up on the play. He plays the down lineman position, one of the two down linemen of the Penn State uh, defensive scheme. He and Greg Gattuso. So with exactly 13 minutes to play in the ball game, we've got a timeout for David. Penn State leading by 10. I'd like to see now second down and eight. Georgia's ball. They're on 22, and they're trailing by 10 points. Last stinger has double wide top of the picture. Walk 
Parker Lee Ashley was motioning somebody along the front had moved for Georgia. And I think the Bulldogs are going to get hit right here with five yards. They are for procedure. And here comes that word again. Boys. Keith, you're, you're exactly right. Uh, Georgia is, uh, they're very quiet. Their bench is quiet. Their fans have uh, a little bit in awe. That long touchdown pass uh, stunned everyone as we look at uh, the scoring. Now it's second down and 13. And Lestinger back to throw in trouble gets it off to the sidelines and the pass is incomplete incomplete intended for Kevin Harris Harris had it but there were thundering hoof bits coming from Chris Sibner had yeah. some thundering hoof bits coming at John Lestinger namely Walter Lee Ashley Ashley was right on top of him and Lestinger had to throw the ball watch number 37 you can see he gets a quick jump uh, across the line as McIntyre uh, the tackle couldn't pull it back deep enough to block him and uh, Ashley makes another fine play. What a football player he is. Third down and 13. Back. Ashley gets after him but Lester pulls it down and runs it out to the 25. That will not be a first down. So Broadway will come in to punt. Keith, I'm getting to where I'm excited just watching Kevin Ball catch these punts. <laughs> yeah, he's oh, a dandy, that's, isn't he? that's one of the most effective plays that Penn State has had returning George's punt. Kevin Barr has been sensational. Number 11, there he is. As you said, he's got the guts of a Berkeley. He's going to catch it and return it. He possibly can. This will be the sixth punt of the ball game for Broadway. Bang's a good one. Foul backs up. Fair catch. Oh, he's uh, let common sense <laughs> invade uh, the circumstances for the moment. And makes the fair catch and gives Penn State the football. First down at the 28 after a 48-yard punt by Jim Broadway at the Pro Bowlers Tour on Saturday, January 15, beginning its 22nd consecutive season. Here on ABC Sports, you'll see it at 5 Eastern Time live. But it will not be live on the West Coast. Critical possession for the Georgia defense. They need to create something to cause a turnover if they possibly can. Penn State goes to Kurt Warner. And Warner goes for four yards from the 28 out to about the 32. And we move inside 12 minutes. Clock running at 11.50. Penn State leading by 10, 27 to 17. Joe Paterno has had undefeated teams before, but he has never won. A national championship. Kurt Warner again having leg cramp trouble. One thing that, uh, that we should point out that uh, when Kurt Warner has rushed for over a hundred yards, their Penn State's record is unblemished, 17 and 0, and he just went over the hundred-yard marker right there. What a football player this young man is! He is a, in a different dimension than, than the average football back. There's Kenny Jackson coming to the sidelines to talk to his coach Joe Paterno. Joe was a quarterback at Brown played for Rip Engel at Brown University English major came over as an assistant to Rip and has been at Penn State ever since 19 odd years. Well and then what 17, 17 is the head coach. head coach. I know of only one other person that followed that same procedure and that was Bobby Dodd the legendary Bobby Dodd. He came to Georgia Tech in 19. Uh, 31 as an assistant coach became the head coach and then retired after being the athletic director and coached his entire career at one school. The comparison on the two leading runners in the ball game today, Herschel Walker has been, as you saw by the numbers, pretty well controlled by a determined Penn State defense. And Kurt this time is going to need a little help to get off the field. You notice they've cut the, the uh, trousers a little bit in the back to get a little more freedom there. I remember one time when Joe Bellino was playing for the Naval Academy. They were playing out in Seattle, Washington. And he kept falling down with leg cramps. And he was a sensational player. Heisman he, Trophy. Heisman Trophy. That's right. And finally, the Washington trainer, Bob Peterson, went over there and said, well, his pants are too tight. And he cut the pants loose. And Joe went on and they beat the Husky. I would have fired the trainer. <laughs> 
Second down and seven. Here comes the blitz. And it works. Knox Culpepper, sophomore from Atlanta, Georgia, made the stop on the Penn State ball carrier, John Williams, and all Skeeter Nichols it was. And so it is third down now and nine. Once again, Penn State has passed on 92% of the third and long situations. Will Georgia defend and rush only four or come back with a blitz as they did on the previous play? Well, what they've done... <laughs> come on, David, you'll lose a finger. <laughs> uh, he looked pretty good. <laughs> You're a baseball player. Get out of there. Different game. Here's the blitz again. They're down and they're going. And the heat's on from the backside and a whistle stops it. And a flag came early on that one. Looks like somebody inside may well have moved. Keith Penn State, Blackledge showing uh, disappointment on it. I believe is a, uh, yes, I thought it was yes, time. they had exceeded the 25 seconds clock. Could be. Vance Carlson will tell us. Delay a game, offense, violation of the 25 second count. When you coach for 25 years, you can sense those things. <laughs> oh, but you? you feel them. I was, I felt myself uh, hurry up, Todd, hurry up, as if he was playing for, the, for my football team. Five flags, 41 yards on the lines now. Well, Georgia's got that decision. They telegraphed the rush last time. Now they fear they're going to defend. Third and 14. Blackledge back, looks at Jackson. He's covered, goes for him anyway, and he gets the catch. And he is nailed up across the 40 at the 41, but it's good for a first down. Tony Flack hit him hard, but Kenny Jackson, once he gets his hands on it, will normally hang on. You, to throw this type of pass, you need poise, you need a rifle for an arm, you need speed at the wide receiver, ability to catch that type of pass, hold on to it, and three and a half seconds of line protection. Penn State has all of those capabilities. Jackson is outstanding. He has caught 17 touchdown passes in his career as a, a Nittany line. Great catch. And the first down at the 42. Peter Nichols. Got about four yards as we go inside 10 minutes to play in the ball game. 9.45. Clock running. That's an impressive group along the front uh, for Penn State. Conts, McGinnis, Lau, Battaglia, Sparrows, Keller. Keith Conts is the only returning starter at the position. Sparrows was a tackle, moved to guard, so really they've rebuilt that offensive line during this season. They've got Bow wide now, second down six. Blackman stands up, goes quickly, throws behind Greg Garrity. Incomplete. Todd now 12 of 23 for 228 yards of the ball game. He, he has very definitely been the key. I'm very impressed with Todd Blackledge. When you throw those deep intermediate passes in behind the linebackers, they are the ones that are most likely to be intercepted. Georgia had 35 interceptions going into this game, and they've yet to pick off a one of Blackledge's throws. for a first down. Stan Dooley brought him down. When you think run on defense, excuse me, when you think pass, you're trying to get up the field. You can see the Georgia people run themselves right out of the play. It was the draw play. Williams is the fullback. Played tailback some last year when Warner was hurt. Will probably be the tailback next year, as Keith had mentioned earlier in the show. And here's Penn State sitting on the Georgia 40, leading by 10 points. They put it in the end zone here, and I think the party's over. Georgia, the party is on for Penn State. They'll take a gamble at it if they can get another touchdown at this point in the game. Well, let, let's let's set the scene, Keith. If, if I was had the, the responsibility of covering, calling the Georgia defenses against a team that has tremendous speed at the wideouts, a tight end that's an exceptional receiver and blocker, two runners like Williams and Warner, plus a passer like Blackridge, what do you do? You can't punt when you're go after this. I, I, that's My been, reaction is go after That's a good point. That's all that they've had success with is uh, mostly 
rushing and blitzing. But they got burned on that deep pass. But they got burned on that long pass play because Tony Flack, the freshman, just simply misplayed it. Here's John Williams again. And Georgia gets him at the 36 after he picked up four yards. This is the most points scored against Georgia since 1979 when Auburn beat him 33 to 13. The Orange Bowl, third quarter, LSU 17, Nebraska 14. Oh, the Bayou Bengals sneak that one out of there. Be his... LSU has a talented football team. They're young, they're soft. Very young. Exactly. Except the senior quarterback, Reichia, is outstanding. He had a great senior year for him. Third down and seven. Oh, just outside the Georgia 36. Blackledge gives to John Williams to the sideline. And he's tumbled out of bounds. Stan Dooley, number 50, got a hold of him. But it's Williams is a big, stocky, strong fellow. He stands 5'10", but he weighs right at 200 pounds. Keith, an amazing thing is that Williams runs a 4-4. The coaches tell me he's just as fast as Warner. Decision time. It looks like the, the paternal is going to go for it on fourth down. Yeah, he's got to go, what? Uh, two, two yards. yards yeah. Yard and a half. Really, a yard and a foot. That's four feet is, is the distance. He's going to spend the time out to talk it over. So Penn State will have two left. Leading by 10, 7-17 to play. State has now come out to 7-17 to play with Ralph Giacomaro in punt formation. The reason you would think they're going to punt it is because Ken Kelly, who is a linebacker, is the principal blocker in the center formation for the punter. They could snap it to Kelly, and he might take off, but they don't. They go to the punter, and he just pops it up in the air, and look at that. He tried his dead level best to hit a yeah. knuckleball and kill it somewhere down inside the 10. Instead, he wound up with a perfect spiral, and it'll come back to the 20 for a touchback. Well, like hitting a golf ball. When you try to hit it easy, you hit it further <laughs> yeah, than when you try right. to, to hit it far down the fairway. The Cowboys and the Vikings coming up on ABC's presentation of NFL Monday Night Football at 9, 8 Central Time. A couple of playoff teams bumping heads. Dallas, of course, looking very, very strong. And the Minnesota Vikings have had their troubles, but because of their schedule, tougher opposition, they have been able to find their way into the playoffs. Herschel Walker's out of the ball game. Oh, here is Jones going for an option to Archie, and it is incomplete. He got his hands on it. Herman Archie, as Chuck Jones was swinging to the right, trying to throw the ball deep. Chris Sidner among those there. There were two people there, and I think Sidner's the man that spoiled it. Those kind of plays are good in the first quarter when you have momentum. As you can see, uh, Penn State was not fooled. Robinson. They're expecting some tricky play. They're expecting Georgia to do something uh, extraordinary, different from what they've done, and they were ready for it. Beautifully played. And now Walker comes out into the wide position. He and Harris are lined up wide on the left side. They give it to Herschel, trying to get him one on one. He takes it back toward the middle, and he takes a lick from Walker Lee Ashley and goes down. After gaining two yards, it'll be third down, and they will need six. Penn State has, we've already mentioned, two defensive linemen down in what we call a, a lineman stance. The rest of their people are standing up, watching for Herschel, being able to react up and down the line in gang tackling pursuit. Herschel Walker made 85 yards in the first half. He's gained 12 in the second half. He's out there as an eligible receiver. Lastinger is caught behind the line of scrimmage by Walker Lee Ashley. As Walker Ashley played a great football game. When you have a defensive player like this and he's having a good game, boy, the Drennan gets to Floyd and he wants to make more big plays. And there's nothing like a sack. You can see the block by the fullback did not put him on the ground. He just kept his feet and makes a sensational diving tackle on third down. First sack of the Georgia quarterback today. And on fourth down and about 17, they will punt. Broadway stands at his end zone. He should hit it up around the three. Gets it out. Good kick. Very good kick. Bow drops it. Georgia's got it. 
just when I brag on him, he drops the ball. Yep. And I'm saying Georgia's got it. That seems to be the it is. Georgia's ball. So Kevin Bow gambled one time too many. A 43 yard putt. Didn't come up with it. Georgia somehow finds a way to stay in the football game. The amazing part of it is that they're in this football game, and it shows the character they have, and also some luck right there as Bow dropped it. But the great coverage by Georgia, they were surrounding Ball and Bow, and they got the ball with a great opportunity. First down, Georgia at the Penn State 43, five minutes and 38 seconds to play in the ball game. Please throw the ball if you want to win. Walker's at flank, Chief. Yep, got him out there again. He and Harris on the same side. Lastinger looking at him, gets it away. Pass caught by Harris, and Harris is dropped at the Penn State 27. The reason Harris was wide open, they went after Walker. They went right after Herschel going down the boundary. Changing the formations, is the easiest way to mix up your offense. That's the simplest and sometimes the most successful. And you can see the linebackers and ends taking off after Walker, leaving Harris number 20 open. Walker's back at tailback now on first down. Lastinger lets it go, and the pass is drilled and complete to Clarence K, the big tight end. And that was an All-American pass that Mr. Lastinger stuck in there that time. Clarence K is an excellent target. As I had said earlier, he may be the most physical player on the Georgia football team. Big, strong tight end. Made a great run and catch to set up the, the second field goal against Clemson early in the season. Second down and one, 4.45 to play in the ball game. Ball goes to Herschel. Walker looking for the first down, has got that, goes out of bounds, saving time as he skips out at the 12. Run out by Mark Robinson, and the clock stops at 4.38 to play in the game. Anytime you see Walker go outside and make yardage, you know that their fullback, McCarty, has made a good block. Once again, he blocked the contained man, and Walker just sprung right outside for the first down. Now, here is Tron Jackson into the lineup. First time we've called his name today. Number 25 in at tailback as Walker stays on the sideline. And Jackson goes in motion. And the ball is given to the fullback. And McCarthy punches to about the nine, where Dave Pappenroth brings him down. They're working on Walker. I don't know what it is that's bothering him. Can't see pictures of that. The Georgia offensive line is an experienced unit. Really, the, probably the strength of their football team, but uh, that shows you just how ex good that the Penn State defense is. They've done a great job of shutting down the Georgia run. Ron Jackson again goes in motion. Here's Lastinger back to throw, running for his life, throws in the end zone. No! Oh, my goodness, I think maybe Clarence K tipped the ball away from Kevin Harris. Harris might have been able to catch that ball, but they weren't looking for each other. There was no particular play. It was just scrambles time, and it got away. When you roll out to the right against a team with the speed of, of Penn State, Hamilton, their safety, is blitzing, is, and forced last thing is just to throw it up. Goodness gracious, I believe you're right, Keith. If K had not gone up, Harris would have called yep, it for the touchdown. We're told that Herschel Walker's shoulder, right shoulder, popped out. But you know what? Popped back in, and the big horse is back in there and throws a block. And the quarterback gets it away to Kay, and he's got a touchdown to Clarence Kay. Punting the ball on fourth and one. Penn State's decision to go back to a very, very costly one. Great throw by last thing. Tremendous and a great catch. Look how wide open K is. Number 23, Cunningham, was completely fooled on the play. He went across the line and uh, was covering Norris Brown going to the right of the Georgia team. Lastinger took a pretty good wallop from Ken Kelly, and then big old Ken reached down and picked him up, patted him on the rump, and sent him on his way to the sideline. So the youngster comes up with a big play. 
Keith, I, uh, Georgia is uh, looking to looking they? for two. They have won the national championship two years ago. They are not interested in a tie. And this, we should uh, mention that uh, Division 1A is the only part of the NCAA that doesn't use the tiebreaker system. So Georgia is not going to take a chance. Which is really ridiculous. They should have a tiebreaker system in Division 1A. Well, if they can get two, someday we it, will make it 27-25. They're going for two, and, and with Butler, you know, Butler can burn you from 60 yards. That's Georgia's thinking. There's 354 left to play. Georgia trailing by four. The option is: Do you go for one and hope you can get the ball back and kick a field goal and tie? No, that's no good for Georgia. They want to go for the national championship, and I respect them and admire them for their decision. All right, Tim Case has come in now. He is a center, but he has come in replacing Michael Weaver. So they get Tim Case, a tall fellow, in replacing Weaver. Unbalanced line to the right, Chief, and a flood. They're going to go right. Give it a walker, and Herschel is hit. Fighting, hit, stop, don't make it. Well, George is not hurt on the play. If they're going to go for the national championship, a field goal wouldn't help them anyway. They've got to score, even if they made that two. I think it's a good decision, whether, even though it didn't work. I agree. I think it was a good decision. It does not work. There's a Penn State man shaking up on the play. 354 to play. No side kick. Penn State sending out its receiving team. They've sent out defensive backs, receivers, running backs people with good hands and they're lining up there's uh, Joel Coles uh, lined up there Keith the option is that, uh, with 354 left to play you have to gamble that your defense can stop Penn State and get the ball right back but then you would have probably less than a minute and a half uh, to move down the field and George is not uh, geared to, to move that quickly although they did at the close of the first half on some real unusual type plays well, we'll see what this decides to do. 354 is a lot of time. Uh, right. they have, each, each team has two timeouts left. Yeah. I don't know if I'd want Penn State to have the ball at midfield. But that's not my decision. Thank goodness. <laughs> not mine either. 27-23, Penn State. Butler. He hooks it off to the sidelines, jerks it out of bounds, down around the uh, 15. I don't think he wanted to do that. He was trying to hit an open spot yep. away from the two backs that are back there to handle the ball. The two being Jackson, the wide receiver, and Bow, the safety man. And the two men are having a, would have a hard time covering the ball. In fact, what he tried to do is take it right over their head and hope that the Georgia players can get down and recover. The, the defensive people, Bow and Jackson, are not lining up very deep for you fans. You can't see it there. You can see it there. One is on the 25-yard line, and one is on about the 35-yard line. Well, they're giving Georgia, or giving Butler in this particular instance, uh, well, see, now Bow's going back. He's going back to about the 25. Butler's going to hit this one from his own 35 after the five-yard penalty. And Penn State is still reading onside kick because they've still got all of those uh, defensive backs and, and running backs and receivers up front. They're giving them 25 yards. There's 25 yards of open territory behind Jackson and Bow for Butler. He hits it. He wants to stop the ball before. Oh, great, he's done it. What a great kick. And they've got Bow deep. Gosh, right? It hit the, just exactly what he wanted to do. He's a sophomore, and he's one of the coolest youngsters I think I have ever seen. Well, Penn State, in my judgment, made the mistake of not putting at least one man back to the goal line to handle any deep uh, kick. That was a tactical error on uh, Penn State's part. There's no reason not to have him back on the 15-yard line of the 10 to guard that territory. So here are the Lions leading by four points with 3.53 to play in the ball game. They have the ball at their own 14. First down has been the big down for them. Here's the blitz. George has got
got to go after him now. Blackledge back. Hands the ball off. Kurt Warner. Warner trying to get outside. Struggling with leg cramps. He gets six yards as he comes up across the 20. Jimmy Payne made the tackle. One of the most troublesome plays against the Georgia scheme of defense is the cutback. Going out the back door. Warner picked up about seven yards. Going back away from the way the play was designed. Yeah, they give him the ball at the 21. Walk, Warner's back there stretching Keith, trying yep. to hurt, look, free up his leg. And well, they got Williams right in front of him. And Warner's got it. And Warner should have his first down. Nah, he's close. Depends on the mark. Whether it's a right-footed mark or a left-footed mark, I reckon, is uh, will tell you whether or not he's got his first down. So it'll be third down and very short, or else it'll be first and ten. And Matt Carlson wants a long look, may bring the change. Steve, we coaches are always joking and saying, well, you have to learn to play with pain. You can't play with injury, but you can play with pain. And you would have to say Warner has been very gallant. And now I believe Warner is going off the field. He just can't do it anymore. It's too painful. Well, at least he cannot. Yes, he's going off. Just short. Third down, and Warner is leaving the ball again. Joel Coles will come in. I suspect what will happen now. Let's see. You'll probably get Coles in. Now you're going to get Mumford. You're going to get Tony Mumford to come in there and probably be the tailback with the Williams and Coles in front of him, or else you could get Mumford lining up at fullback with Johnny Williams at tailback. But a big we'll play for Georgia, Keith. They've got to gamble. Yep. They've got to have everybody going through the gaps, try to cause a bad play. Third ball. and a foot. Quarterback sneak. And that should do it. Should be enough for the first down out to the 25. Another advantage of a big, strong, six foot four, 210 pound quarterback. Muscle right over behind the guard. You know, Blackledge, I have a soft place in my heart for him. He's the son of a football coach. His dad coached at uh, Kent State for the Pittsburgh uh, Steelers right now. And coaches' sons have a hard time, believe me, to be a great athlete. And he's a 5 8 captain. 3.8 on your man. Two minutes and 45 seconds to play in the game. Penn State's going to get hit here, here with what? Obviously, an offensive lineman moved before the, after he'd taken his stance in the, in the three-point stance, he's restricted. He cannot move. Well, that's a break for Georgia. Still, Georgia has, what, Keith, two timeouts left. Yep. Both teams, two timeouts left. Well, let's put it in perspective. 2.43, if, if Penn State keeps the ball on the ground, Georgia uses both of their timeouts. Ball foul. That end was covered. He cannot move. First down. Georgia uses both their timeouts, and they fail to make the first down. Then Georgia will have about a minute and probably 15 seconds to. and 15. Blackledge turns, gives the ball up to John Williams, and Williams breaks one tackle, but Jeff Sanchez finally brings it down. He picked up six yards on the carry. The clock is running. Two. Ten. Coming up. They stop it. Nope. Not yet. 27-23, Penn State. No fraternal undefeated teams in 68 and 69 and 73. Has never won a national championship. The biggest prize in college football. SMU beat Pitt today, 7-3. Finished undefeated. One tie right against Arkansas. Second down and eight. Williams again. Hard runner. Left side. The 32. They've got to go to the 35 just over it to get the first down. And now timeout is called by Georgia. They've got one left. You've got one minute, 37 seconds to play in the ball game. What this country needs today is a really good rental truck. Third down, short four, long three, however you like. The ball is sitting just outside the 31. Penn State. They've got to go across the 35, near the 36, to get the first down. Penn State lines up in a spread formation. Only one remaining back. 
Georgia's bunched up. Bulldogs think they're going to run. Change of the play. Do it. Garrity caught it. First down, Penn State. That may have, that sound you heard may have been the door closing. Give credit to Blackledge. He slipped over the defense, saw Georgia was going to blitz, had 101 coverage, two receivers into the boundary. He checked off and went to the 101 pattern for the first down. That is experience. Blackledge in his fourth year at Penn State, redshirted as a freshman after he was injured his leg. Joe Paterno is nearing the biggest prize that we have to offer, a coach, a team, and the school. Blacklitz turns, gives the ball to Skeeter Nickel. Now Penn State just has to run it down. Georgia with one timeout remaining. They'll try to be as judicious as possible in spending that timeout. But with that first down that Penn State just acquired, it may have become academic. Lions leading by four, 27-23, and time is so precious now. The 49th Sugar Bowl game, matching number one Georgia, number two Penn State. First man, Williams. He sticks his helmet in there and gets a yard. Georgia's gonna have to spend the time out. And they do it right there. 50 seconds to play in the ball game. 5-0. Penn State trying to hold on to the ball and a four-point lead. Just 50 seconds to play in the ball game. Penn State, four-point lead. Georgia now with no timeouts remaining. They just spent the last one. All the Lions have to do, really, is snap the ball twice, don't make any mistakes. Don't get to running around in such a way that you can lose the ball. There's a loss on the play. It is fourth down. And the clock is running. And they just let it run and let it run and let it run right down and uh, take the last tick of the clock and then punt it away. Georgia's only chance is to block the kick, and they've got them all up there. Georgia will get the ball with about nine seconds left on the clock. They're going to send Jimmy Harrell, the beat man. Penn State's not going to punt. They're just going to snap the ball and, uh, and run it down. They don't have to punt. They could. It was probably the safe thing. They'll take the five-yard penalty. Take the five-yard penalty and then kick. They only got six seconds left. They don't have to punt it at all. All they got to do is, is let it go, but... I believe that they'll punt it, Chief, because uh, Georgia could possibly stop them quickly, and uh, with that, the clock stops automatically on change of possession. Get they'd, one get, play. they'd get one play, and they yeah. could create a possible penalty situation by throwing the ball over the goal line. Georgia's only chance is to block the kick, pick it up, and score with it. Not a bad ending, huh? <laughs> Boy, give credit to the Penn State football team and give courage to the Georgia team. And both teams played well. No blink. All 11 of them up out rushing. Nobody back. 11 people. 11 red shirts up on the line. They're all going after the ball. Everybody's going. And Giacomaro gets it out of there. Three, two, one. Penn State wins it. 27-23.